Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's April 12th, 1988, and the Toronto Maple Leafs have arrived at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, facing elimination in their Norris Division semifinal series with the Red Wings. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Steve Eiserman, Adam Oates, and Colin Campbell, kingpins for the Detroit effort. Eddie Olchek, Tom Fergus, and Boria Salming, some of the stars for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hello once again, everyone. Welcome to Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. I'm Joe Bowen. Well, we have a classic for you tonight for a variety of reasons. It is game five of this semifinal series in the Norris Division with the Detroit Red Wings. The Leafs won the opening game of the series in Detroit 6-2. Things looked rather rosy. They lost game two 6-2, but were heading back home to Maple Leaf Gardens. And then disaster struck. In game three, they lost 6-3. And in game four, it was an eight to nothing debacle at the hands of the Detroit Red Wings. The ice was littered. Booze cascaded down from the graves. In fact, a gardens usher resigned on the spot when he threw his hat and coat onto the ice. So the Maple Leafs head to game five at Joe Louis Arena, trying to get back some of their composure, not to mention some of their dignity. We have that action for you here tonight. The starting goaltenders. Jean will start Glenn Hanlon in goal with Greg Steffen backing him up. And John Brophy will counter with diminutive Alan Bester to try and prolong this series. It's April 12th, 1988. It's the Leafs and Wings in Game 5 of their Norris Division semifinal. And this is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. This portion of Leafs TV is brought to you by J.B. Goodhue. Built for work. Hey, Tyler, where you been all day? Uh, I'm a cardiologist. Again? Yeah, it's my pacemaker. It's been reacting with my game console. No kidding. Yeah, the other day I was rescuing my 13th damsel from the dragon's lair. Freaking heart stopped. So you going to the Halloween dance on Friday? No, I can't. I'm prepping for a colonoscopy. Ah. Uh. They don't want you seeing how well a 50 pounds lighter yet 37% stronger platform performs. They're nervous you'll discover how the new suspension makes bumps virtually disappear. And they sure don't want you to know how eight more inches of leg room adds comfort and makes you one with the machine. But most of all, there's one thing they really don't want you to see. Skidoo dealers invite you to discover the full 2008 Skidoo lineup at skidoo.com. Skidoo, there's nothing like it. In the interest of providing you with the best programming possible, Leafs TV wants to know what you think. Give us a call at 416-815-2440 or go to MapleLeafs.com and contact us with questions, comments, or suggestions. Leafs TV, official station and Leafs Nation. the Detroit Red Wings, Bob Probert is certainly a force. His best offensive season is also a year that he has almost 400 minutes in penalties. Steve Eiserman is not in the lineup though. He's out with a knee injury. For the Maple Leafs, this is the final playoff series for one of the greats of all time, Boreas Salming in a Leaf uniform. And Mark Osborne is a member of the Maple Leafs. He's arrived in the NHL as a second round pick of the Detroit Red Wings in 1980 after playing junior hockey with the Niagara Falls Flyers. After being dealt to the New York Rangers, the Leafs acquire Osborne for the first time for Jeff Jackson in a third round pick. He would later be reacquired from Winnipeg by the Leafs for Lucien Deblois. And over 919 games, Osborne scored 212 goals and totaled 531 points. And he joins us tonight on Leafs Classics in a game that, uh, boy, it's got a lot of implications, I guess, Ozzy, as you look back on April 12th, uh, because two days earlier uh, is the, maybe the most embarrassing moment, certainly 
in Leaf history. I guess if you went back maybe to the game where the Leafs got beaten by Boston 11 nothing back in the 60s, it was something of an icon in, in, in that department. But here's a game. You win game one in Detroit, come back to Toronto, split in the series. Looks like things are going all right. Lose game three and then eight nothing. What was going through the bench and your minds with that? Well, it was a memorable night, of course, <laughs> as you <laughs> mentioned. I mean, uh, going through, you wanted to hide under the bench, Joe. I mean, that, uh, that night was uh, probably the most embarrassing moment in my career, let alone, uh, you know, being a member of the Maple Leafs. It, uh, everything went wrong. And, uh, I mean, I've often talked about this where uh, you're playing and uh, you remember people throwing, I mean, you as a fan going to the game and, and getting a puck in the stands was awesome, you know? Like, everybody wants to get a puck and Pucks were going in the stands, people the pucks back onto the ice. Uh, people were throwing their precious jerseys onto the ice. And the usher resigns by throwing his coat oh, and hat on the he, ice. I remember him coming, <laughs> to the, coming to the glass and taking his, his jacket off and his hat and whipping it on the ice. And it was like, this, this is just so hard to believe. It was so humiliating. You did. You wanted to crawl under the bench and, uh, and hide. Now, you go into the dressing room after this. Uh, John Brophy is uh, well known as a, a coach that... Uh, wore his emotions on his sleeve and, and was very vocal and, and, and very intense. Uh, was this the time to come in and tear a strip off the wall? No, I don't even, uh, I don't even remember John even coming in the dressing room. I don't think he even had to you know, make an appearance. Uh, he was probably even more embarrassed than we were as players uh, having to stand behind the bench and watch that. Uh, so I don't remember John coming in and uh, you know, he was known for his ranting and raving and... Uh, and he hated Detroit because oh. of Jacques Demers. This is a history that's got oh. the World Hockey Association. Oh, no doubt. I mean, uh, they had a bitter rivalry when, uh, when they coached against each other in the, uh, as you said, the WHA. And uh, Brof uh, was so competitive. He had a competitive fire on him uh, that I've never played for another coach like that, that uh, had that burning desire and competitiveness to win. But... Uh, he wanted to personally try to find Jacques Demers <laughs> himself, <laughs> and uh, you, you know how he played the game. I mean, he wanted to go and grab Demers and, and pummel him himself. If he could find him at a hotel in downtown Toronto, he's going to find him. <laughs> you tell the story about before a game uh, earlier in the season against Detroit where to drive a point home, uh, he, he did a little uh, bit of an antic, always a well-dressed, well-manicured man. Yeah, and it, it, you're going to make me say this, but I am going to say because everybody knows about it, and John will probably laugh at it as well, but it was part of his way of getting the team motivated. And we went into Detroit one night and lost, and they came back the following night. And uh, uh, Brof's way of motivating uh, us was uh, taking his uh, beautiful uh, you know, three-piece jacket off and, uh, and jumping up and down on it and saying, <laughs> we're going to get these guys if I have to go and you know, beat the MERS myself. And we're sitting there... I'm looking at Borea Salming, and John is jumping up and down on his jacket. I couldn't <laughs> believe it, but, you know, that's part of the fun of the game that you don't know about until, uh, you know, long after. All right. Yeah, two days later after this, you're in Detroit at Joe Louis Arena, and you're facing elimination. Uh, what was said as far as the players were concerned uh, as you led up to this game after that thing that went on two nights earlier? Well, I mean, we just wanted to get back on the ice as soon as possible and try to redeem yourself. Uh, you know, it, it was a, a pretty quiet uh, following day, as you can imagine. Uh, obviously, we're embarrassed and we're flying into Detroit. But by the time you wake up that, uh, that day of the game in, in Detroit, uh, things off, often do change and uh, you get different perspective. I mean, we did beat them the first game 6-2 uh, to two, and now we're heading into that, uh, that game 5 with, uh, you know, renewed optimism and... Uh, Obviously, wanting to make uh, make make us you know have some kind of respect left in us after getting shellacked, and, uh, and that's the kind of attitude we went into that game. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it, and there are a number of keys. Obviously, one is to get over the humiliation of uh, the game in Toronto, Game Four. Put some pressure on the Red Wing defense and play some solid defense in front of goaltender. Alan Bester, because it is April 12th, 1988, and the Leafs and Wings are getting set for Game 5 of their Norris Division semifinal. And this is Molson Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. We're going out for a smoke. You coming? No, thanks. I'll pass. Okay. What games? I'm quitting. <laughs> quitting? Like you just had one this morning. I'm cutting back gradually with Nicorette. That's nuts! You should be out there with them, making a nice, relaxing smoke. 
That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, you can cut back to quit with Nicorette. Nicorette, help crush your craving. Experience the ultimate in full high definition with LG when you don't just watch it, but live it. Life's good. Want to win an iPhone before it hits the stores? Then let's play Memory. Have a close look at this iPhone menu because some icons are about to disappear. Can you tell me which icon is missing? Text your answer, son or clock, to 84040 for your chance to win. Phone. Have another look. Time's up. Text sun or clock to 84040 now. TMG subscription service. $2 Canadian per message. Four messages per week. 16 plus only. To cancel, text stop to 84040. Welcome to this one. And we hope it's a lot better than the last one. Harry, we've heard all kinds of things about this Toronto team. And which do you believe? Have they folded? Or are they coming out here tonight to try and turn it around, not only for themselves, but for their fans? Terry Fraser, the referee, Jerry Gauthier, Mark Vine, the linesman. Well, they can't look at the three game have to win situation. They have to look at the first seven or eight or nine minutes. Get by that. Then get out of the first period, no worse than a tie, with a little confidence, and get on with the game and worry about tomorrow night when tonight's done. Ken Raggett, after suffering through the debacle Sunday, gets the night off, and Alan Vester will try to extend the series. Glenn Hanlon, two shutouts against the Leafs last year, and on Sunday, another over Toronto in this playoff. Glenn Hanlon starts again tonight. Shabbat, Colbert, Klima were to start now. Jacques Demers has Burr with Ashton and Nil as his starting trio up front. And on the defense, Delorme and Norwood. And the Toronto Maple Leafs have Old Jack Blaisdell and Osborne, Kern and Salmi. Well, Jacques Demers is involved in this playoff war with his players. Brophy seems to be involved in this playoff at war with his players. Detroit Red Wings sing it in. First goal has been a very big goal in this series. And the Red Wings move the puck up across the line. The Leafs go get it out. On this first rush, it'll come just to the corner of the Leaf net. Bester watches the defenseman clear it up on the boards. Plays down, couldn't get it out. Neil was in to hit him, and he had the side step in. Norwood back for Detroit. Ahead to Burr. Burr's pass. Over the boards and the play called. I don't think there's any question about the fact if John Brophy's back as coach, as Mr. Ballard seems to indicate, as many as seven or eight players that are playing tonight won't be on the Leaf team next fall. Everything going Jacques' way at the moment. Leading the series three to one. Lost the first game and have come back with three in a row. They'd love to make it full straight tonight and end this series here at the Joe Lewis Arena. Old check knocked off the puck. Kern gave it to Salming, who shoots it in. It's tipped high on the glass. The Leafs are in first. To the far corner, though, is nil. Well, the Red Wings dropped it back. Dumbo played it out. Burr comes to center, winds up. Bester, the stop from the long shot. Good hard shot, though, from that distance. Wings Hallward in center ice. Left it for Zombo. Shooting it in. Detroit again went after it. Here comes Jerry Gallant chasing Blaisdell. Gallant got a stick on it. Couldn't get it in front of the net, though. An old check. Still on there trying to get it out. Barr got away from a check thrown by Blaisdell. Nice move at the line by Oates. Oates nearly set one up. Blaisdell comes back out. He'll shoot it in, and the Leafs will make changes, no doubt. Well, Hanlon coming out of the net. There's Dom Foose. He centered it. 
and it got by everybody. It was tipped away, and I afraid he missed it at the blue line. Gill and I afraid he, the leaf defenseman. Steps on the defense with O'Connell for Detroit. That's O'Connell. Here comes Oates up and that penalty call. First one of the game against Toronto. And it'll be this man, Dom Foose, going off for tripping. Dom Foose of the Maple Leafs drawing the first penalty of the game for hooking Adam Oates. Have a look here, checking from the rear. No need to hook him that far away from the goal. Take a couple of hard strides. Adam Oates is anything but fast. The Red Wings have scored three goals in their last six power play attempts and six for 21 in the series. First long shot is just off the net. Leafs will major step in getting back into the series here early if they can kill a penalty. Conversely, the Red Wings will be on a high roll if they can score in the power play here. They're in there passing it around. Puck to the side of the net. Nina centered it. Went through the crease. Shabbat in the corner, looking around. Gets it back to Klima, closing in. Klima winds up, doesn't shoot it. Back to the line, here's the shot. That's blocked by Curran, and the Leafs get it out of the zone. And on the wing with a long shot is Osborne. Easy save for Hanlon. Red Wings move it up to Probert. Probert to the line. Looks over it in front, throws it off the boards behind the net, and Shabbat has it. Gives it to Klima, spinning around in the corner to Shabbat. Shabbat looking back to the line, and there's the pass. Back to Shabbat again. Shabbat winds up, fake the shot. Right in front it comes. Best at the mercy of the Red Wings, Klima. But they it out. Red Wings keep pressing. Beats his shot just wide. Off the leg and missed the net by an inch or two. Norwood keeping it in. Great pressure by the Red Wings. Klima up the side of the net for Probert. Probert made a good move away from that. Brady Klima takes his shot, kicked out, and the Leafs clear. But boy, are they hanging on right now. 25 seconds left in the penalty. Dom Foose is in the penalty box, and the Leafs with just 20 seconds left on the penalty now. Get it up to center ice and out. Nice play to Olchek. He's in the slot. Shoots. Goals. Olchek. Short-handed goal for the Maple Leafs. And what a turnaround this is. With 10 seconds left in the Leaf penalty, they withstood a tremendous amount of pressure exerted by the Red Wings. And now Old Check gives the Leafs the lead. Well, nothing like a short-handed goal to turn your team on, especially when you're lacking confidence. A shot as he scored from the goal from the top of the circle. This is a tough shot for the goalie because he has to move with the skater. And as he's moving, you can see that Glenn Hanlon, he missed it. It's as simple as that. Glenn Hanlon doesn't let those kind of shots in very often. Simply beat him, perhaps half screen, but a huge goal for the Leafs. And that's exactly what they needed early in the game. The first goal has been such an important stat for them all year long. Let's see if it means anything tonight. 344 is the time of the goal by Ed Olchek. Short-handed goal. Onward to the Red Wings, shoots it in, and now Dom Foose is out of the penalty box. Penalty is over. Koser is knocked off the puck, and Dale DeGray leads three men out for the Maple Leaf. Dom Foose coming in, his shot didn't get through to Hanlon. Howard grabs it quickly and skates out. Four of them are up to center on this rush. Howard's shot went out of balance, but he hangs on to it as he sees Shabbat coming in. And there's no further play. Bester making the save and holding it. That, that shot seemed to hurt Bester. It was a long shot. It knocked him right off his feet. I can't blame John Brophy for choosing Bester over Reggett. Never mind the last game. When you're down to one more loss and you're out, you'll grab any straw. And, of course, the straw he grabs with Bester is that he has had the Red Wing number on more occasions than not in the last two years. Here's a shot from 75 feet out by Howard, and you can see that it kind of handcuffed Reagan, or uh, Bester. You don't know what to do with the puck. Hold on to it. You're never wrong. That he did. And here's the faceoff because of it. Shabbat, who has been a master winning faceoffs for the Red Wings, just failed to get this one. Yaremchuk comes in. His pass, and here's coming in along. Shabbat winds up. Now he passes, scores! Bridgman! Shabbat has been great for the Red Wings. Perfect pass. Well, that's 
started off as a two on two, but Bridgman beat Secord to the leaf end and turned it into a three on two. John Sawat saw that and see there's 15 uh, Bridgman coming up the middle of your screen. You'll catch him in a minute. The Leafs play the two on two property right there. You can see that Secord couldn't catch number 15 Bridgman and it went into the net. One one. The win has been taken out of the Toronto sales quickly. Mel Bridgman gets the goal, and they're even. But now, here's Manawa, but just offside. Good speedy break by Manawa, live on CBC, Hockey Night in Canada. Leafs TV has seven games you won't want to miss. Toronto faces league MVP Sidney Crosby. Stanley Cup champion Anaheim Ducks. Showtime in Los Angeles. Payback in Boston. Consistency of the Devils. A flashy Alex Ovechkin. Last stop, the eye of the storm. Carolina Hurricanes. Seven games you won't want to miss in January on Leafs TV. The best day around town is on my Yamaha. My best farmhand, it's always my Yamaha. I catch the big ones with my Yamaha. For days on the trail with my son, these are our Yamahas. What kind of Yamaha are you? LG, don't just watch it, live it. And now, with a chance to win your share of a $5,000 shopping spree, life's good. I think modern technology and personal fantasy make a dangerous cocktail. While more thrills in life normally offers, Frank's Red Hot Caesar Spicer provides a full flavor Caesar that will thrill you in ways private videos never can. A thrill a bite. Bridgman, who got the wings even, assisting him, Shabbat and O'Connell, 431 the time. Old check from DeGray. Started the scoring. The Leafs a short-handed goal at 344. 1-1 one, one now. Again, Marwa just on side this time. Going in. Snaps missed him. Marwa takes it out front with the pass. It'll come to Kern at the blue line. Dumped it in front. And Marwa had a chance there, but just failed to control it. Marwa again away from Snaps. It's centered. The Red Wings were covering up. It's cut down. Again, centered. But Fergus didn't get the pass. Now Fergus takes over at center. Gets away from Ashton and back. Long pass to center ice. That does not work. And Snaps for Detroit. Backs up. Little easy pass off the boards for Burr. And it's over the glass at the penalty bench. And play called again. Well, there's young Marwa who... Played junior hockey in Verdun this year. Scored 52 goals in 67 games. They brought him up to Newmarket, where he played, where he got four goals and four assists for eight points. And now he's with the big team. And a couple of times on Sunday night in Toronto, Merwa turned an average-looking opportunity into a pretty good chance on goal. A second-round pick, and undoubtedly, he's one of the future hopefuls for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Five minutes, 23 seconds gone in the first. Each team a goal. Shots, though, are five to one. Detroit. One shot the Leafs had by Old Check, one in. From center ice, offside is Old Check on that play. He's having a great series. Well, there's nothing wrong with that Old Check production. The stat that worries you about him is even though he's led the team in scoring and led the team in goals, he was right up there again in the playoffs, he's always one of the worst minus players on the team. I know if you were coaching him, you'd be liking him to work a little harder at reducing his mind, keeping his offensive production up. Bester nearly knocked it in his own net. You could almost tell something funny was going to happen when that puck came off the boards. Bester was very calm, and he has this place buzzing now. He turned, he stopped it, 
And as it turned out, he nearly knocked it across the goal line. Wow. Well, if you wanted to let the air out of the blimp and have a crash in a hurry, this goal would have done it. Fester's quickness, one of his real skills as a goaltender, comes in handy here. He's a little nonchalant when the puck comes off, but watch how quickly, after it hits his left skate, he gets a stick down. And Fester's now describing it as a routine stay. Watch it come off the end of the rink. Fester misplays it slightly, kicks it, and then with his back to all the players on both teams, he makes the save. Face-off now to the right of Vester. You can't tell with the masks, but he looks cool enough. He's got to be shaking a little. I don't think he'd like to repeat that stop too often. One-one is the score. And we're ready to go again. Lima steps in there. And Shabbat was waved out. And the Leafs control on the draw. Todd Gill shoots it on the board for Osborne. He couldn't control it. Delorme kept it in. There's Probert. And he missed Klima with the pass. Shabbat went over there. Klima on the board's bump. And the Leafs get it out to center ice. Osborne shoots one in. And the Red Wings, John Shabbat, back to pick it up and start it. We welcome the Montreal Hartford viewers now to this game. I'm Bob Cole with Harry Neal. Old check coming in for the Maple Leafs. And he missed a chance to get a shot away. We're tied 1-1 here at the Joe Louis Arena. Old check scored first. 344, a shorthanded goal. Bridgman got it back at 431. So 1-1 at the seven-minute mark of the first period. An icing called now against the Maple Leafs. Well, the Toronto Maple Leafs have to score four goals. One of the more amazing stats in the National League. When the Leafs don't score four, that is, they score three or less, they are 0-47-4. I don't know whether I've ever seen such a statistic like that. It just means they never win any of those games. 2-1, 3-1, Boston 2, Buffalo nothing at the Garden. Washington backs right against the wall. The Capitol Center leading Philadelphia. Red Wings on the faceoff. Move the puck in the slot right away. And here's O'Connell moving up. And Vester was down as O'Connell took the shot. But it was right at him. And not a vintage O'Connell shot. Remember now, he broke his knuckle and missed 17 games, part of February and most of March. He used to be able to beat you from here. You have to think that that hand is healed, but not completely better. Another face-off in the lead zone. Secord goes to the lead bench. Bester gets ready. O'Connell is still on there, back at the blue line. Beach on the other side. The defenseman with him. O'Connell again, same spot. And Bester, out cutting the angle, stopped it easily. Leafs get it out. Fergus, the pass behind him. He couldn't knock it down with it. It's kicked in across the line. Back out to center. Leafs shoot it in again. That's Beach with O'Connell. O'Connell gets it away, but I afraid he shot right on, and Hamlin had to be careful. The Leafs press a little bit now. That's Fergus. He has to backhand it into the corner. Marawa got away from a check. It comes to the line. The Leafs keep it in. Now the Red Wings, Jerry Gallant, will get a chance to clear it out of the zone. Decides to give it to Beach, and now it's up to center to Oates, and back here to Gallant. Gallant moving in, Oates was nailed at the blue line. He's back up, though, and after it. He centers it, they score! Richardson thought he had his man covered. Dave Barr, but the Red Wings get a 2-1 lead. I'm not so sure that that puck didn't hit Young Luke Richardson, tying people up in front of the net has not been his biggest uh, asset this year. Let's have a look and see whether Barr puts it in or Richardson, whose back is turned, puts it in. And in fact, Luke Richardson, not knowing it, deflected that puck into the rink. Luke has not played a lot and seems early in the game, when he gets on, 
he always causes a goal but in this case it was an accident he was doing his job a lucky goal for the Detroit Red Wings right in off the skate of Richardson so it's two to one Detroit league scored first the Red Wings now with two in a row and they've taken the lead Shabbat Controls it at center, gives it to Hallward, who has to back up. Dao is out there watching him. Leaves intercept in a check, and Dao can't get very far. Mel Bridgman, who has scored a goal for the Red Wings, tried to go in. And now Dao to the other side with it. Salming lifts a high one into the right of Hanlon. Goaltender out to give it to Zombo. And now back out. Bridgman and Shabbat. Shabbat across the line, getting set, shoots. That's deflected just wide as Bridgman was nailed in front of the goal. In attack, back up there with Salming. Salming moving up, backhand shot, off the shoulder of Hanlon. Old check, bump nil and knocked him down. Kept in there. Old check takes a shot. That's deflected in front of the net. Old check moving up. Leafs are hitting now. Delorme was hit hard by Old check. Nil. Spears the puck at the blue line and knocked it into the corner. Detroit up there moving forward. That is Ashton trying to dig it out. Shabbat there with him. On the other side is Nil. Nil back of the net to Shabbat. He's tied up by DeBray. But Nil intercepts the pass. Nil to with it. Now Shabbat again. Shabbat over on the boards. Nobody touches him. It comes to Norwood. Shoots. Deflected by Nil. And Bester down. And the goaltender hangs on to it, but the Wings are taking it to the Maple Leafs again. Are you ready to change your life, look younger, and be stronger? I went from a size 38 to a size 30 and lost over 70 pounds. You too can get remarkable results with Bowflex Home Gyms. All it takes is one simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three times a week. When they say you can work out 20 minutes a day, three times a week, they mean exactly that. You've got to get this DVD. It'll change your life. Call now for a free DVD that shows how you can get great results with Bowflex Home Gyms. I gave all of my fat clothes to my fat friends. Only Bowflex Home Gyms have power rod technology, the secret to getting a strong, sculpted body fast. I am not embarrassed to take my shirt off. Either I feel better, my wife gives me that little wink every now and then. Own your very own Bowflex Home Gym for no money down and low monthly payments. Be strong, be fit, be Bowflex. Call or go online now for your free DVD that tells you all about Bowflex Home Gyms. Call now. Hey, Tyler, where you been all day? I'm a cardiologist. Again? Yeah, it's my pacemaker. Been reacting with my game console. No kidding. Yeah, the other day I was rescuing my 13th damsel from the dragon's lair. Freaking heart stuff. <sighs> so you going to the Halloween dance on Friday? No, I can't. I'm prepping for a colonoscopy. Ah. Eh. That last Detroit goal by Oates, his fourth. And Farr got the assist. 7.53, 2 to 1 Detroit. Here's Snap's shot. That hit somebody in front of the net, and the Leafs clear it out. But the Wings defense are back there. O'Connell shoots it up to Salming. Salming gives it to Iafrady. He backs up. Try to pass ahead to Marois. Now it's Iafrady missing it. Marois was in behind him. And he played the defenseman's role. Got it to Salming, he moved it ahead. Dom Foose for the Maple Leafs. Comes up across the line and stops. Played it in to the left side for Fergus. He went off balance. Snaps couldn't get it out. Leafs keep it in. At the blue line, barely keep it on the side, but now Snaps will clear it. Long pass ahead, down the ice. It goes to Bester, as Nil was stopped by Salming. Again, the Leafs double ice. Just past the halfway mark of the first period now. Two to one, Detroit. They'd love to wrap up the series tonight. Get some breathing room. Higgins still out with an injury. He's got a bad shoulder. Not playing tonight. 
Dumbo shoots it in. Richmond at the blue line with Shabbat getting set. Shoots. Nice save by Bester. That was a good shot by Shabbat. And Bester, who had been moving the other way, made the glove save. Watch John Shabbat here, 16. If you give him the blue line and he starts traveling across the rink and things get confusing about who you should take, he's one of the better stick handling centermen in the National League. You must stand him up at the blue line and play him physically. He's not known to play as well under those circumstances. Let him open. Look out. Decord stopped the puck and couldn't move it out. Cleveland just missed it. And he would have had lots of time to let one drive. He's been tough on Alan Bester in this series. He's got five goals. Puck shot into the Detroit zone. Here comes Secord. Tried to put it in. Sharp angle, though, to Gray's shot. That missed. It was not a hard shot. Chance in front for Yaremchuk. Goes for the net. Shoots. Rebound is there. Nobody was back at the blue line, and Gill has to race back. Secord fires it too high, and it went into the crowd just inside the Detroit blue line. Kenny Aramchuk, a real wide threat. The Leaf team should continually go wide on the Detroit defense, especially the guys with good legs. Aramchuk, Courtnell, don't try and cut back in time. Here's a nice play right here for Aramchuk. See, he gets the puck past the Doug Howard takes a stick off the puck, so any slash is not going to knock the puck away and ends up with a pretty good shot on Glenn Hanlon. 8-19 remaining in the period. Old Jack scored first, then Bridgman and Oates, and Detroit leads by a goal. Around the faceoff, the Red Wings winning the draw. O'Connell and Snaps are the defensemen. Snaps to center. From there, he shoots it to the boards and it bounces around behind the leaf net. Salming couldn't pick it up. Kern goes over. Here's Galant intercepting. He centered it. Nobody could get a shot though. And it's out into the center ice area again. Snap from O'Connell through the middle to Jerry Galant. Galant to center ice. He's allowed to come in. Galant still moved it back. Here's Snaps coming up. Shoots. Mister on the angle covered it. He has to put it back into play. And the Leafs down Foose. Dangerous pass to the blue line, but it comes out anyway. Marwa, great goal. He's in there. Scores! What a beautiful goal by young Marwa. He faked the shot first and then went in and lifted one high when he saw Hanlon move. That's his first, and he'll remember that. It was a dandy. He won't get many any better. He got a real break. He got away one-on-one -on -one right here with a little speed. And he faked the shot on Mike O'Connell, pulled it through, and then stuck it up over Hanlon. Whoa. Dave Barr, 22, gambled and lost right there at the Leaf blue line. And Marwa makes a real nice play here, although I'm sure Mike O'Connell is going to hear about the fact that a 19-year-old junior pulled the puck through him. If he'd been playing the man, the score would still be 2-1. But a great play, young Marwa, and he... Looks like he might be able to help the Leafs down the road a little bit. He can do that very often, he will. 12-28, the time of the goal. Marowa, a very pretty effort. And it's 2-2. All word back for Detroit. Pass ahead. Got by Dao. He tried to stop it. I afraid he turning around. Fell down. On his knees, knocked the puck down to Howard again. To Zombo, Zombo shoots it in. It'll go to Iafredi. Iafredi slapped it off the glass and got it out. Dao couldn't pick it up, though, and the wings shoot it in there again. Leafs have to come back. That is Gill. Skates away from Burr. Gets it up through the middle. Here's a play for Inachak. Hard shot off the glove of Hanlon. Joey Koser takes over for Detroit. Koser getting to the line and out to center. Koser made a good... Trying to go in, he did. He got around Salming. Slapped it behind the net. The Red Wings burr in after it in the corner. And can't come up with what Bridgman does. Bridgman gets in front, centered it. Koser is robbed again. Bester stopping Koser on two shots by the Detroit winger. 
they don't want you seeing how well a 50 pounds lighter yet 37% stronger platform performs. They're nervous you'll discover how the new suspension makes bumps virtually disappear. And they sure don't want you to know how eight more inches of legroom adds comfort and makes you one with the machine. But most of all, there's one thing they really don't want you to see. Skidoo dealers invite you to discover the full 2008 Skidoo lineup at skidoo.com. Skidoo, there's nothing like it. We're going out for a smoke. You coming? No, thanks. I'll pass. Okay. What gives? I'm quitting. But quitting? But you just had one this morning. I'm cutting back gradually with Nicorette. That's nuts. You should be out there with them enjoying a nice, relaxing smoke. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, you can cut back to quit with Nicorette. Nicorette, help crush your craving. Experience the ultimate in full high definition with LG when you don't just watch it, but live it. Life's good. Tough luck around the net in this series. Here it's some more. Bridgman walks off the boards two on one, gets it to Koser. Now Boreas really does a job right here, knocking Joe Koser down before he can pound away at the rebound. Joe doesn't like that, and I saw he was screaming at Salming from the bench. We see, may see more of those two before the night's over. Ashton centered it, but Blaisdell took that pass. Got it out for Toronto. Marawa has scored for the Leafs to tie it from Dom Foos and Fergus at 12-28. And for Marawa, that's his first career goal. And it was a beauty. From center ice, Leafs old check in, dropped it neatly to Osborne. He tried the backhand pass back in front of Blaisdell, but he was covered. Salming couldn't keep it in. Red Wings get it out. Salming missed his man. Oak fired it across the line. And the Leafs get it back out the center again. Five and a half minutes left in the first period. We're tied at two. The Leafs scored first. Old check, shorthanded goal. Red Wings got two in a row, and now the Leafs have tied it. There's Oates again, centering it to nil. To boot that one home. Oates around the net, tried to stuff it in, and he was covered in time. Blaisdell got a piece of him. Osborne shoots one in from center. The Leafs make changes. So do the Red Wings. As Snap starts back for Detroit. Gets to the line, shakes off the check, keeps going. Harold snaps, going in, working like a rookie on the play. Dumped it to the side of the net, and I afraid he takes over for Toronto. Two wings are in there for checking goal. One of them, the dangerous John Shabbat. Shabbat gets to the line and leaves the pass. It's played in by Veach to Shabbat again. Shabbat centered it at Klima. Not a good pass, was on his skate. The clean was open. Down the ice, snaps. Trying to stop Yaremchuk. Does this time. Pinned him on the boards. Beach around the net away from Secord. Leading the Detroit players to center. Beach up to the line. Stops there. It's knocked away and back in there again. Fester has to cover up. And he hangs on to it. Hockey night in Canada. A Stanley Cup tradition. 2-2 Two -two tie in the first period and... Uh... Rookie, and I do mean rookie, Daniel Marwa in his very first National Hockey League game uh, scores just a beautiful goal, uh, Mark Osborne. And here's a guy that uh, later on in his career, a, a bad back, really hampered a, a career that at this particular point uh, looked like it was on the verge of stardom. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, he came in and uh, scored an unbelievable goal. Uh, you know, if we get a chance to see that, uh, he made a terrific move. Uh, kind of moves you like to see today, like guys like Jagger and that to do it. And uh, obviously after that playoff uh, series, he went on to, uh, I believe, score over 30 goals the following year and, and uh, have a lot of promise. And uh, it's too bad that he did uh, suffer his back injury. He was never the same player since. Speaking of back injuries, uh, Wendell Clark uh, this season plays in just 28 games, 12 goals. Uh, this is a young man who has uh, very quickly uh, become the leader of this organization and and it's his enthusiasm and his robust play that many times gets things started and uh, his absence in no means uh, is a, a small one here oh yeah no doubt I mean uh, you can't lose a guy like uh, like Wendell uh, 
you know, that was his only third or fourth year in, in the league. And, uh, you know, what he did, did uh, prior to him getting injured and, uh, you know, he could obviously score and, and uh, finish checks and, and uh, losing him was, uh, was, was costly for us in that series. Did you ever see a guy in the league who really, I mean, Wendell was not a big man and yet uh, played as a heavyweight and in, in many, many forms, uh, oh. both, uh, both when the clock was stopped and both when the clock was running. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, um, I mean, Wendell was, you know, six foot. I mean, he wasn't six two, six three like a, like a Bob Probert who he off up against and they had some beauties, didn't they? And, uh, but uh, he obviously played a lot bigger than his size was and, and I've never seen a guy that strong from you know his upper back and upper body and you remember some of the times when he was one, one punching guys and throwing oh them down one, one arm. Yeah. So uh, that's that farmer in him that, uh, the bail <laughs> that's Wendell, and exactly. Uh, and shoot the puck. <laughs> oh, shoot the puck, uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous wrist shot, snap shot that uh, he come over that blue line and, and we've seen him score goals just inside the blue line with a wrist shot. How many guys could do that? Exactly. But he's not here tonight. But the Leafs have bounced back after having an early lead and the Red Wings uh, tying and going ahead. The Leafs have come back on a pretty goal from Daniel Marois. Let's go back now to Bob Cole. Four minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the first period. I'm Bob Cole with Harry Neal. John Brophy back of the Leaf bench. His team going ahead. We saw the Wings get ahead. Come back to tie. Face off to the left of Alan Vester. Starts again tonight for the Maple Leafs. Puck to Barr. Barr centered it. Everybody was tied up in front of the net. Oates especially. And the Leafs get it up to center ice. Allward had to poke at it. Fergus was in there looking for it. Now the Wings get one in on their goaltender Hanlon. He was alert, waiting for it. Oates skates around the goal. Now he has some room to start moving. Adam Oates to the line to center. He'll go up to the leaf line. Then lost control of it. And the Leafs, Marois, back out again. But the play is called in behind. Marois had been moving down the ice. And a slashing penalty has been called. And it's Dompus again. Islanders and Jersey. Dandy series. LaFontaine has tied it for New York. Hartford hanging on to a one goal lead. Canadians want to end that series. Hartford tough though. Double penalties there, Bob. Uh, Van Boos got two, but so did Dave Barr. So there'll be no power play. 3.50 left, and the Leafs are getting close to doing one thing they had to do tonight, get out of the first period in decent shape on the scoreboard. So far, it's decent for both teams. They're tied at two. And offsetting minor penalties here. Here's Blaisdell up there for Toronto. Left wing pass in the slot. Osborne and Blaisdell went in there. Blaisdell had a stick lifted by that man, Norwood. But he couldn't clear it. Here's Gale centering it. It hit Blaisdell's state and bounced away. Red Wings get it out across the line. Ashkin moving up the center. Shoots it in. And Bester out of the net to leave it for Iafredi. He fired it without looking over there and Delora waiting for the puck. However, Blaisdell for Toronto. Tried to stick handle out of his own zone. Now Todd Gill comes out. His pass straight to Ashton. And again, Iafredi moves up. Iafredi doing it himself. Pass in front. And a nice play. But Old Check could not make contact. He just missed it in front of Hanlon. And the net went flying. Two minutes and 54 seconds left in this opening period. It's 2-2. Face off deep in the Detroit zone to the right of Glenn Hanlon. Marawa with his first goal in the National Hockey League. Coming here in the playoffs has tied the game for Toronto. Here's Secord. Bring it back to Salming. Kern, the other defenseman. Salming goes to Yaremchuk at center. Couldn't knock it down. Hype Kortnilan, I think his first ship. And Salming has to go all the way back. There's Big Probert standing in front of the net. Here's Shabbat stealing it. Backhand shot, and Bester had to be alive to stop that one. Shabbat came out of nowhere. Red Wings intercept. He shoots. That's blocked. And Yaremchuk 
deciding he'd better get rid of it. The Leafs were running around, and he clears it down the ice. Horton coming in. The goaltender Hanlon had to play it. No icing, and now Shabbat moving up across the line. Stick handling around. Nice play to Lima. Lima tried to come in. Lima missed a chance to shoot it. At the line, another shot. And it's dumped off the boards. Not out. Centered again. Secord. He couldn't move it out. Good port checking by the Red Wings. Colbert winds up. Klima gets in. Oh, and Buster made a brilliant on Klima's backhander. Oates went after it. There's Oates with the puck now. Centers it. Todd Gale slapped it away. The Leafs frustrated with the forechecking Red Wings. That's a good line. Klima and Colbert had some great chances. Now Kern laid it to the line out to center ice. And the Leafs are shooting it in again, right to Hanlon once more. Goaltender tries to clear it himself. It's dumped out across the line to center ice. Here's Oates moving up there. Dribbles it in. Fester out of the net into the final minute of the period. Took a funny hop on the glass over there and back of the goal again. Red Wings are on it. It's centered. Gallant got it back to O'Connell. He just rolled it up to the corner. Kern slapped at it. And it's in a check who will clear the zone. Up as far as the Detroit line. Terrian going in. And he lost it again. 35 seconds to play in the period. On the far side. Puck still inside the line. The Leafs making changes. Is in a check. Tries to hold it in there. He gets loose. Centered it. And it just bounced away from Osborne. Who now centers it. Oh, check around the net. Tried to stuff it in. In a check. Didn't see it. 15 seconds to play in the period. And now, I have Brady to win a chat. He had to shoot it off to the far side. Old Jack has dumped in front of the net, and he has been injured with seven seconds to play. It is called, and Old Jack is shaken up. He's cut two, Bob, so this will become an automatic five minute penalty. I think he's all right, but he's cut under the eye. And if Kerry Fraser had, had, had in fact called the minor penalty, and he will have to add three minutes to it to make it a major. Now we'll find out shortly whether there was any call at all. It may well have been accidental. I had looked over there when I saw Old Check fall to the ice, and I looked to the referee. He had not made any indication that there would be a penalty. However, we'll see now. There's the high stick by Hallward, seven on Old Check. If it wasn't called, you can see that it should have been. I'd I don't think Doug Hallward went after him on purpose, but he had the stick up over his shoulder. And the referees have called that very strictly. And a high sticking penalty can be called by the linesman. So you're into that same situation. You mean three of them missed it? Well, you saw how it happened right in front of the Detroit netminder, Hanlon. Hallward got a stick up trying to check the lead player who went flying. He went down immediately. But as I said, I didn't see any indication from the referee that a penalty would have been called. Now, Hallward was just trying to tie Olchuk up in front of the net, and his stick got high. But I guess Kerry Fraser looks upon it as an accident. Most of those mental high sticks have been called this year. And I think the Leafs have a, have a legitimate complaint. And there's Brophy. He better be careful now. When the referee comes over to the bench, it's usually to tell you to keep quiet. <laughs> Fraser is saying that uh, I'm sure that I saw it. It was an accidental high stick. Well, they're both yelling now. That's an easy way out, John Brophy said. So Fraser must have relayed the message that nobody saw it. So no penalty, in fact, was called, and uh, this last face-off. Just outside the line, there's the horn that ends the first period. The shots were 14 to 5 for Detroit. And the score at the end of the first period, Toronto, Detroit 2. The shot scores! Goal alert. You want to always be in the game? 
Text GO TOR to 52525 to get all your Maple Leaf Game Go alerts. Don't miss another go again. Get your Maple Leaf Game Go alerts. Want to win an iPhone before it hits the stores? Then let's play Memory. Have a close look at this iPhone menu because some icons are about to disappear. Can you tell me which icon is missing? Text your answer, son or clock, to 84040 for your chance to win an iPhone. Have another look. Time's up. Text son or clock to 84040 now. TMG subscription service. $2 Canadian per message. Four messages per week. 16 plus only. To cancel, text stop to 84040. The best day around town is a hammer. My best farm hen, it's always my Yamaha. I catch the big ones with my Yamaha. For days on the trail with my son, these are our Yamahas. Just watch it, live it, and now, with a chance to win your share of a $5,000 shopping spree, life's good. First period intermission, it's a 2-2 tie. Uh, Ed Olchek uh, getting high stick. Carrie Fraser uh, missed that one as well. But uh, Mark uh, Osborne is our guest, and Mark, Ed Olchek uh, comes over to Toronto in a, a controversial trade uh, that, that is made. Al Secor joins him. Rick Vi uh, is heading to Chicago. Um, Eddie's an interesting guy because he, he's a character amongst himself, very talented young man, a Chicago native, and uh, uh, what was he like to play with? Because later on, uh, in a couple of years, you're part of Doug Carpenter's high-scoring Leafs that had uh, Olchek, Lehman, and Osborne as the, the leading threesome. Well, it was, uh, obviously that was a big trade. Uh, you, you know, you, you didn't mention that Steve Thomas was part of right, that deal yes. going, going to Chicago as well. and. Uh, um, but I obviously had the opportunity to play with Eddie, and, and uh, Eddie was a, a young player that, that grew up in Chicago. That uh, I think it was, there was a lot of pressure on him to play at home there, and so the trade I think was very good for him coming over to Toronto. And and uh, Eddie was a great scorer, playmaker, and and we really hit it off both on and off the ice as uh, soon as Eddie came over. Uh, you know, we got uh, married, you know, soon, uh, pretty close to each other, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Playing on the ice with Eddie was uh, was a was a great thrill. He uh, uh, good shooter, great shot, really, I guess, and and uh, and maybe surprising quickness. Uh, his skating style seemed a little laborious at times, but he had great quickness and acceleration. Yeah, Eddie uh, Eddie definitely had a heavy shot. I mean, he played with a uh, with a stick similar to Rick Vive, where heaviest stick in the league and long, and and Eddie could really. Uh, have a heavy type of a shot, you know, guys that really can shoot the puck hard, but Eddie had a hard shot and, and accurate, and, you know, I mean, he scored over 40 goals. Um, and, uh, yeah, not as, you, you put it well, not as fleet of foot, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but Eddie got around and was smart and uh, was creative, and, uh, you know, he was obviously the reason that Gary Lehman ended up scoring 50 goals after, uh, after that, playing with Eddie, uh, Eddie, Eddie fed Gary a lot. Mark, uh, you're tied 2-2 after a period, and uh, after coming to Detroit after the mess in, in Toronto, how does the team feel in the room? Um, uh, there wasn't there wasn't a lot being said uh, prior to that game. I think there was uh, enough motivation from the drubbing uh, a couple of nights previous, and uh, you know we just uh, you know obviously talked a little bit about the the game and prepared and and uh, had beaten them you know pretty handily in the first game, and you know they shellacked us, but. Uh, you know, playoff hockey, it's, uh, you step on the ice and things are new and uh, can't wait to get the game started. All right, well, it's 2-2 at the end of one. The Leafs and the Detroit Red Wings back on April the 12th, 1988. It's the Norris Division semifinal and it is game five. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. I think modern technology and personal fantasy make a dangerous cocktail. While more thrills in life normally offers, Frank's Red Hot Caesar Spicer provides a full flavor Caesar that will thrill you in ways private videos never can. A thrill a bite. Are you ready to change your life? Look younger, be stronger? I went from a size 38 to a size 30 and lost over 70 pounds. You too can get remarkable results with Bowflex Home Gyms. All it takes is one simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three times a week. 
When they say you can work out 20 minutes a day, three times a week, they mean exactly that. You've got to get this DVD. It'll change your life. Call now for a free DVD that shows how you can get great results with Bowflex Home Gyms. I gave all of my fat clothes to my fat friends. Only Bowflex Home Gyms have power rod technology, the secret to getting a strong, sculpted body fast. I am not embarrassed to take my shirt off. I look better. I feel better. My wife gives me that little wink every now and then. Own your very own Bowflex Home Gym for no money down and low monthly payments. Be strong. Be fit. Be Bowflex. Call or go online now for your free DVD that tells you all about Bowflex Home Gyms. Call now. LG. Don't just watch it. Live it. And now, with a chance to win your share of a $5,000 shopping spree, life's good. 2-2 tie. The Leafs and the Detroit Red Wings. Eddie Olchek, a shorthanded goal from Greg Terrian to open the scoring and give the Leafs some much-needed confidence. Mel Bridgman and then Adam Oates scoring to give the Red Wings the lead. But Daniel Marijuan, one of the prettiest goals of the season, has tied the game for the Maple Leafs. 2-2 tie. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. High def colors like you've never seen. Only on Panasonic Viera Plasma. Hey, Tyler, where you been all day? I'm a cardiologist. Again? Yeah, it's my pacemaker. It's been reacting with my game console. No kidding. Yeah, the other day I was rescuing my 13th damsel from the dragon's lair. Freaking heart stopped. <sighs> so you going to the Halloween dance on Friday? No, I can't. I'm prepping for a colonoscopy. Ah. Uh. They don't want you seeing how well a 50 pounds lighter yet 37% stronger platform performs. They're nervous you'll discover how the new suspension makes bumps virtually disappear. And they sure don't want you to know how eight more inches of leg room adds comfort and makes you one with the machine. But most of all, there's one thing they really don't want you to see. Skidoo dealers invite you to discover the full 2008 Skidoo lineup at .com. Skidoo, there's nothing like it. This is Bob Cole with Harry Neal back at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. We're tied at two after one period. And here's how it happened. Old check, a shorthanded goal, by the way, at 344. Bridgman tied it at 431. Oaks his fourth at 753. And Marwa, his very first goal in the National Hockey League, a picture play at 1228. But territorially, Harry, the Red Wings own the Maple Leafs. And the shots will indicate that as a fact 14 to 5 in the period. The Leafs have to be very careful when the Shabbat line's on. They are by far the most dangerous trio for the Red Wings, and they had about six excellent chances in the first period. Icing called right off the bat against the Maple Leafs. It'll come all the way back into Bester's territory. Another area the Leafs have been second best in almost every game is losing the draws, especially the draws in either zone. And, uh, you know, if you lose 75% of the face-offs in your own zone, it's hard to escape without having a couple of goals result almost directly from the loss of the draw. When you're facing off against a man who's beating you all night, I think you have to stop trying to win the draw and start trying to scramble it. And from that scramble, the puck goes to the corner, and the Red Wings move in on top of it. Nil tries to dig it off the boards and it cannot. Penalty. Harry Fraser is called a penalty on the Detroit Red Wings, I believe, for tripping. The that's going to get the penalty doesn't know yet he's got it. Nobody has moved to the penalty box. There's Kerry Fraser. DeLorme is circling uh, dangerously close. 
to the gate, and there's Sean Burr in there. Tough way to start a period. I'm sure Jock Demers, here's the penalty right here. I'm sure Jock Demers came down pretty heavily on the Red Wings for that period. They don't want to let the lease into this thing. Sean Burr for tripping and the Maple Leafs. Would love to get their power play going. Osborne overstates it, and it got by Gill and out to center. The Gray waits. Now the pass into the skates of Old Check now to Gill. Gill shoots it on the boards in the corner. Osborne moving up at center to Old Check. He couldn't make a play. And the Red Wings send two away. It'll be Delorme just pushing it down into the league zone. Two for 24 on the power play, which is a terrible success rate. Added to that is they've given up two shorthanded goals. Down the right side, that's DeGray shooting it in. Hanlon stepping behind the net to stop it. Gill can't stop it at the blue line. And Bester now will have to contend with Dave Barr coming in. Bester waits, sees Barr, and goes to Gill. Todd Gill coming out. Less than a minute remaining in the penalty. Leafs haven't had a shot yet. Gill dropped it outside the blue line with everybody going in. And it's been murder for the Maple Leafs trying to get an organized attack going with a man advantage. Down the ice it goes again. Off by Afraidy, right to Bester. 35 seconds left in the penalty to Troy. Salming will try to shoot it in. He'll do it. And there's Fergus moving up with Marois. Nil with Snips. Marois, the helmet, couldn't find the puck, and the Red Wings shoot it down the ice again. The Red Wings' penalty killing has been just super in this series. Number one in the league during the season, and number one in the league at the moment in the playoffs. Here's Dom Foos coming up there, away from Snips, who whipped the puck away from him. Harold Snips made a good play and got it out. And the penalty is over now. The Red Wings have killed a yet another one. Well, Harold Snaps is one of the better defensive zone coverage defensemen in the National League. When he puts his eye on you, you're going to be down or up against the glass. Killing a penalty, he has one problem. He cannot shoot the puck very well, so he gets his stick on it and has a tough time icing it. There are four guys, Bob, that were instrumental in the Canucks going to the Stanley Cup in 1982. Quality people, every one of them, coaching the four of them. Two minutes, 26 seconds gone in the second. Still 2-2. Todd Gill of the Maple Leafs shooting it into the Detroit zone. There is Shabbat on the puck. Shabbat tried to move it out with a skate. Got it to the line, but not out. Klima moved up on it. The Leafs keep it in. Cortinal nearly fell down. And now Shabbat starts back out. Three of them to center. Klima back to Shabbat. Shabbat going right in there. Around the net. Dill controls it. He's out front again. Centered it. And a low shot by Hallward missed. Klima centered it. Went by Shabbat and Probert and out. Shabbat really controlling the play. Now Klima is stopped. Probert can't play it. He did anyway. And the play is called offside from Detroit. This is the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. It's been since he first set skates on the ice. Hi, hockey fan. Now he's back. 11 original episodes shown during the first intermission of Leafs games on Leafs TV. See Peter Pock for the first time in over 30 years. Catch him only on Leafs TV. I'm Peter Pock. We're going out for a smoke. You coming? No, thanks. I'll pass. Okay. What games? I'm quitting. <laughs> quitting? But you just had one this morning. I'm cutting back gradually with Nicorette. That's nuts. You should be out there with them enjoying a nice, relaxing smoke. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, you can cut back to quit with Nicorette. Nicorette, help crush your craving. Experience the ultimate in full high definition with LG when you don't just watch it, but live it. Life's good. What a win, an 
iPhone before it hits the stores? Then let's play Memory. Have a close look at this iPhone menu because some icons are about to disappear. Can you tell me which icon is missing? Text your answer, son or clock, to 84040 for your chance to win an iPhone. Have another look. Time's up. Text son or clock to 84040 now. TMG subscription service, $2 Canadian per message, four messages per week, 16 plus only. To cancel, text stop to 84040. I think modern technology and personal fantasy make a dangerous cocktail. While more thrills in life normally offers, Frank's Red Hot Caesar Spicer provides a full flavor Caesar that will thrill you in ways private videos never can. A thrill a bite. Smugging a fair bit of ice time again tonight for Detroit. The wings shoot it down. It goes in behind Bester and icing is called against the Detroit Red Wings. We're deeply saddened to learn of the sudden death of Suzanne Kuklowitz, the daughter of Aggie Kuklowitz. He was well known to many hockey fans for his involvement in international hockey tournaments. All of us at Hockey Night in Canada extend our most sincere sympathies to Aggie and the Kuklowitz family. Two-two is the score here at the Joe Louis Arena, nearing the four-minute mark of the second period. Red Wings trying to wind up the series tonight. And the Maple Leafs trying to extend it. Eight to nothing Sunday night. They've obviously forgotten that these Maple Leafs have. Although the Red Wings are out 15 to 5. Here's a chance for Tyrion to pass, though, on his skate. Snaps moved it up. Gallant couldn't go in. He was taken out by Kern, allowing Salming to go in. And there's a penalty coming up against Detroit, I think. The Leafs send Bester to the bench. Trying to get the extra man on. Kern goes back in his own zone. Kern fires it along on the boards and Beach touches it. Now the play is called and there is a penalty called against Detroit. Live on CBC, Hockey Night in Canada. Another penalty to Detroit here in the second period. Jerry Gallant put the slash on the lead player and he's gone. But it seems to be no problem to these Detroit Red Wings when they're short-handed. Shabbat on the ice again. Don't have to worry about that. But the pass to Blaisdell. Hard shot by Hanlon, though. Shabbat picks the opening. Gill with DeGray. Osborne with Olchek and Blaisdell in. Blaisdell to the right wing, centered it. Too far for Osborne. Pushed it back to the line to Osborne again. The Gray is there with him. And there's Shabbat, but the Gray stopped it. Now it's cleared by Nil down the ice. And another penalty is being called. And of this one also against Detroit. Bester is on the bench. They move it to center. Old check shooting a long one in. Be better for the Leafs to let the wings play the puck and have a longer period of time with a two-man advantage. They finally do anyway. And Here's yet another penalty against the Red Wings. 102 left in Gallant's penalty, so Toronto gets a real opportunity here to do something. Two men up for a minute and two seconds, and then 58 more seconds with a regular power play. This power play has sputtered so poorly this year that you have to wonder whether this is another example of a game where they need a power play goal but can't get one. You remember the Leafs had a two-man advantage for well over a minute and a half earlier in the series, and the Red Wings just simply shut them down with the three skaters they had on the ice. They absolutely have to win the draw, and John Shabbat, 16 for the Red Wings, or Adam Oates, 21 for the Red Wings, have been almost unbeatable on the faceoff. Brophy wants to talk to Fergus and Dom Foos. Brophy's called a timeout. Not a bad idea. He knows that this could be the turning point of the game. He wants to make sure he's got the players he wants on the ice, that they're all rested, and he's giving them some instructions now as to how he wants them to go about to creating the chance that they need. And of course, what they want to do here is score in the first minute and then score in the second minute of the power play. Shabbat will be on, that's for sure, for Detroit. Delorme. And Norwood are the defensemen. Osborne, Olchek, 
Blaisdell, Aya Frady, and Salming for the Maple Leafs. A two-man advantage for a minute and two seconds. That's the time remaining in Gallant's penalty. Two twos to score, and right off the bat, they win the faceoff, and it goes back, and it went by Aya Frady down the ice. Now then, Osborne will get the zone for the Maple Leafs. Takes a look around. They have to spring somebody open for a shot. Tip near the line. There's a shot from the blue line that hit Norwood. The Red Wings, only three of them out there, but they're on the puck all the time. Aya Frady now shooting. Scores! Aya Frady took the shot. I think it might have been Tipboard in front of the net. And that will allow Gallant to come out of the penalty box. But more importantly, uh, there's still a penalty. Hanlon is shaken up on the play. And the Leafs take the lead 3-2 to two and still have the man advantage. I don't know what happened to Hanlon here. Looks like he might be winded. The shot from Aya Frady comes from the point. I think you're going to see 12 Osborne come into your screen. There he is. And he get a stick on it. Now what might have happened is he tipped that and it might have hit Hanlon in the groin on the way through. Pretty tough to see what happened. Well, Maybe I think this that, angle will do it. I think you'll see it right here. That it, the, the shot, on the tip shot, hits Hanlon and hardly makes it to the back of the net. And I think it hit him in the groin, and he doesn't look too comfortable now. Right here it is again. Another angle. I'm sure that's what happened. The trainer runs out. How are you feeling, Glenn? And Glenn says, Good. Hanlon rolling around in pain, obviously. And the trainer trying to determine just how seriously he might be injured. We'll try another angle for you folks. Our Hockey Night in Canada crew working overtime and right behind the net. The shot will come through. Watch Osborne's stick. Touches the puck. Up it goes. How to go, fellas. Perfect shot. Now they, the referee usually gives the goalie about a minute to recover and then they have to replace him. Now the question here is, will Hanlon be all right in a few minutes? Good camera right work and production with Jim Marshall, our producer, and Ron Harrison, our director tonight. We have a minute and 31 left in the penalty to the Detroit Red Wings. Hanlon is slowly getting up. He's back on his skates, but obviously in pain yet shown no sign of leaving although Stefan is off the bench over there at the Detroit bench and is on the ice just waiting to see if Hanlon is going to continue or whether he'll come out I got a feeling he'll go to the bench for a break anyway I have Frady by the way was given credit for the leaf goal unassisted power play goal at 530 Stefan is going to come in to replace Hanlon who's injured Bob Cole and Harry Neal at the Joe Lewis Arena. A minute 31 left in the Detroit penalty. Stefan is in the net. Hanlon has just collapsed in the runway on the way to the Red Wing dressing room, so he's a little more seriously hurt than we think. We welcome you people who have been viewing the Montreal Hartford game. Bob Cole and Harry Neal at the Joe Lewis Arena. A 3 2 score for the Maple Leafs. They're on the power play again, moving up. I have Brady has just scored. And the Leafs are just in offside. Nil of Detroit is in the penalty box. And he has a minute 17 left in his penalty. Just seconds ago, Aya Frady was given credit for the goal. Shot from the blue line. We thought was tipped in front by Osborne. But the official scorer so far has not changed anything. He says Aya Frady at 530. And at the time, the Leafs had a two-man advantage. Now they still have a one-man advantage. Well, Stefan's in there. Any goalie will tell you. They don't like sitting on the bench watching the game, then very suddenly have to go in and start playing. Stefan replacing Hanlon after that last leaf goal. Hanlon was injured and has gone to the Detroit dressing room. Here's Salming coming out. Salming the center with a long shot, and Stefan, I'll tell you, had to be careful with that one. He jammed the pads on it and held it. Oh. It's been a rather quiet evening so far. Very quiet, but Blaisdell just gave Harold Snaps the spear. Snaps is a nasty guy in his own zone. Here's the shot from center. Stefan takes it on the pads. 
And there's a typical Detroit Red Wing penalty killing situation. Four players strung across the blue line. Fifty-two seconds left in the penalty to Detroit's Jim Nill. So Maple Leafs continue with the man advantage. And they're leading three to two. And they win the draw this time. Gill winds up, doesn't shoot it. DeGray shoots it. Rebound, and it's cleared by the Red Wings down the ice. Bester out of the net for a second for DeGray. Leafs are coming out. DeGray plays it up to center ice, and here's Fergus cutting in. Fergus looking for somebody open, goes back to the net with it. It's Marois playing it ahead. Marois gets in front of the net. Dom Foos back there and lost it. He held on to it. And then finally had it knocked away. Now he centers it. And Shabbat was there for Detroit. Norwood slapped it and got it by the gray down the ice. Next and Blaisdell. Minor penalties. Offsetting, of course. And now the Red Wings are at full strength again with the Leafs coming in. Hard shot that misses from Fergus. It's centered again. And the Red Wings get it out across the line. Dom Foose has nil all over him. Gill played it to Fergus, who shoots it in, and the Leafs make changes. Stefan replacing Hanlon here in the second period at 5.30. After I have Brady had scored the go-ahead goal for Toronto. Zombo moving up to center and a long shot in to the right of Fester. Red Wings in after it, but it's Terry in getting out. He has Dao up there with him, a long shot, a high one. Over the net. And Burr failed to play it out of the zone. Lehman knocked his man down. A little pushing and shoving there. I afraid he after it, or rather in a check after it on the boards. Dropped to the line. And Terrian got in front but was tied up by Zombo. Dao trying to knock it loose. They hold it on the boards. Play called. Stefan has replaced Len Hanlon here early in the second period. Hanlon got hit in the groin and he collapsed in the runway and he was down for about two minutes and they finally carried him into the Red Wing dressing room. So he's a little more seriously hurt spot. The Leafs leading three to two. Can't penetrate. Shabbat gets loose again for Detroit. Stops in there. He controlled it to Probert. Probert looking for Beach in front of the net. Beach comes in to dig it out. Beach takes his shot off the side of the goal. Probert leaving it again, and in the slot area, he picks it up, gets it back to the line. Right into Probert. Kleva! Kleva centered it. And the Leafs are at the mercy of the Red Wings again. High shot on the glass. Here's O'Connell moving up. O'Connell back of the goal to John Shabbat. He fooled one player, then another. And finally, the Leafs get a chance to clear it and move it outside the line to Seaford. His pass ahead. Little too far for your end, Chuck. Maple Leafs shoot it down. This will be icing as the Red Wings go back to pick it up. During the halfway mark of the second period, I have Freedy, the go ahead goal go on a power play at 5 30. Boy, I don't like that matchup that John Brophy had now has allowed Jacques Demers to get twice. Russ Cortnell's line, Yaremchuk and Secord against Shabbat. Cortnell's the worst minus on the Leafs in this series. And Yaremchuk and Secord are both a minus three. I know when you're on the road, you don't get the last change. But that line has been getting chance after chance every shift. You have to try and get three guys that will play a little defense against the three of those fellas because they are on a roll. Red Wings winning again, the draw, the shot. Another penalty coming up. This could be against Detroit. They're getting a rash of penalties here in the second period. And the fans here at the Joe Louis Arena do not like it. The best day around town is on my Yamaha. My best farmhand, it's always my Yamaha. I catch the big ones with my Yamaha. Days on the trail with my son. These are our Yamahas. What kind of Yamaha are you? Are you ready?
ready to change your life, look younger, and be stronger? I went from a size 38 to a size 30 and lost over 70 pounds. You too can get remarkable results with Bowflex Home Gyms. All it takes is one simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three times a week. When they say you can work out 20 minutes a day, three times a week, they mean exactly that. You've got to get this DVD. It'll change your life. Call now for a free DVD that shows how you can get great results with Bowflex Home Gyms. I gave all of my fat clothes to my fat friends. Only Bowflex Home Gyms have power rod technology. The secret to getting a strong, sculpted body. I am not embarrassed to take my shirt off. I look better. I feel better. My wife gives me that little wink every now and then. Own your very own Bowflex Home Gym for no money down and low monthly payments. Be strong. Be fit. Be Bowflex. Call or go online now for your free DVD that tells you all about Bowflex Home Gyms. Call now. LG. Don't just watch it. Live it. And now, with a chance to win your share of a $5,000 shopping spree, life's good. I think modern technology and personal fantasy make a dangerous cocktail. While more thrills in life normally offers, Frank's Red Hot Caesar Spicer provides a full flavor Caesar that will thrill you in ways private videos never can. A thrill a bite. Dave Barr now, the latest penalty against Detroit for interference. We'll pick it up for you. Well, the lead player's trying to get out to cover the point, and you can see right there at the lower right corner, Barr simply trips him. He'll serve two for that. They believe he's getting all kinds of chances to get back into this series. They're leading three to two on one power play goal. However, they had a two-man advantage when they scored that one. Their power play has not been very successful. They're in on the play this time. Osborne gets it to the line, solving shot away off the net, and it finds its way over the glass into the crowd. And the Maple Leafs with a man advantage. Can't keep the puck inside the line. Burr going down with Ashton breaking for the net. Ashton centered it. Great chance for Burr, but he was stopped. Back out for Blaisdell. He centered it. Old Check shoots, scores. Old Check with a magnificent shot on this three-man rush for the Maple Leafs. Another play goal, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are leading four to two. Well, give credit to Boria Salming. Way back in front of his net, he made a big time shot block on Sean Burr. Watch this one right here. And that caught both wing penalty killing forwards. A three on two, Blaisdell's got it, pulls the defenseman over, and Eddie Olchek, boy, you don't see too many better shots than that one. He gives the Leafs halfway through this game a 4 2 lead. We'll get the official scoring play for you in just a moment. But it's a big goal for Toronto. The Red Wings look for it back. Fester stopped one and another. Two big saves by Fester on the sharp shooter, Adam Oates. And again, Kerry Fraser is in the middle of things. And there could be another penalty called here. I am Brady of the Maple Leafs. Not. Well, the Maple Leafs have uh, grabbed the lead. A couple of goals, Ally Afraidy with a two-man advantage, and Eddie Olchek scores on the power play just a couple of uh, seconds after Boreas Salming uh, gives of his body and himself. And uh, Mark Osborne, uh, we had the pleasure of watching him play uh, the majority of his career, I guess. Um, but every night there was something different. This was an amazing athlete. I mean. Uh, his, his body fat percentage and everything was just an amazing abil ability to play anywhere. I mean, he could play forward, center, left wing. I don't care. I think he could play goal. And, and many nights he did. He, he, <laughs> he did, and uh, it was a privilege to play with a guy like that. Uh, not only his ability on the ice, but uh, he was a great person off the ice as well and uh, obviously going to be a future Hall of Famer. And, uh, but uh, he, he, was, he was an amazing athlete. Uh, um, he did things that uh, you know we took for granted, or there was never described enough, or or given the recognition. I think that he would probably get today um, during those uh, during those lean years of the of the 70s, where he played the majority of his career in a Maple Leaf uniform. And so many times in those years during the 80s, it was Boria, look after the kid, play with one of the youngsters, and and so 
the creativity and the ability, the offensive flair that he showed early on in the 70s maybe when Ian Turnbull and, and Sittler and McDonald were there was really put on hold because of the better betterment of the team and, 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 and protecting a, a young defenseman. Yeah, no doubt. It, and can you imagine what he would have been able to do uh, if he, you know, from an offensive standpoint, if he had a stable stay-at-home guy that, you know, a lot of these, you know, good offensive defensemen do play with nowadays, he was often uh, given the task of playing with uh, an 18-year-old defenseman. And we saw a lot of those guys come in, uh, you know, drafted right out of junior hockey. And, you know, he's either playing with a, uh, you know, a, a Boimstruck or a Bobby McGill or, you know, all these guys that are young rookies, a Luke Richardson. And, uh, and uh, you know, he was required to stay at home and, uh, and take care of them. Well, those guys will probably tell you that that really helped their yeah, careers immensely. He uh, obviously worked very hard in the off season. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sure looked that way. Uh, you know, Boria was, was an amazing individual, a athletic. He was just a natural. And it was always amazing to me because for the rest of us that kind of labored and, and painstakingly took our summers where we went to the gym and lifted weights and rode the bike, stationary bike, and, did, and, and started skating at the end of July just to get ready for September training camp. First day of training camp we'd get to, and, uh, you know, we'd have to do blue lines or, you know, certain kind of conditioning drills. And Borey would be way ahead of all of us. And that was his first day on the ice. <laughs> and it was, wha that, that's the secret. Don't do any training in the <laughs> offseason. Go hang out with Borey and you'll be the best conditioned athlete on the team. <laughs> I'm uh, not sure that would have worked either, Bart. It would have worked for me, believe no, me. You got that right. <laughs> well, we're in the middle of the second period. The Leafs have taken the lead in this game five of the Norris Division semifinal. And let's go back to Bob Cole. Eddie Olchek gets his fourth of the series, and boy, is this a vicious shot. Wow. 35 feet out. No chance. Red Wings now a chance to get back again. They're on a power play. Iafrady is in the penalty box. Finch lost it. And Olchek is on there killing a penalty and scooped a high one down. That fourth Maple Leaf goal. His second of the game, Old Check at 9.57 from Blaisdell and Salming. Another power play goal for Toronto. Now the Wings are on a power play. In goes Galad is up there with him. Beach couldn't stop it at the blue line. And it bounces out. Old Check and Osborne killing the penalty with Salming and Curran. Now Barr from center ice up on Salming. He stands up at the blue line. Bester out of the net can't make contact with the puck back of the goal. Adam Oates is on the ice, and he'll come up with it. Oates turning around in the corner, given a little time. He'll pull the leap defense apart. He centers it. Back to the line of beach. Green shot. Fester blocked it. And the Leafs get it out again. 55 seconds left in the penalty. If Toronto can kill this one, it'll be huge. Here's Oates, though. Right in. Scores! Boy, is he hot for the try. got it back to him and Adam Oates who's been dynamite on the power play there's the pass that's the gift here's the goal that puts Oates in the clear Carrion tries to hook him but can't and Oates who's a very patient hockey player waits for Alan Bester to open his legs and then sticks it between them to get the Red Wings back in the game Adam Oates again for Detroit that makes it four to three. His fifth goal. So he's up there with Lima now. But this guy has been in on just about every Detroit scoring play, one way or another. That's on the power play, he's got about 80% of his points. So he's dynamite. Detroit Number 21, Adam Oates, is taking over a lot of the offense with the injured Steve Eiserman. And the Red Wings are within a goal now. And that power play goal at Colbert is time. He finally lost it, but Gill lost his stick. Bester's lost his stick. Gill and Bester, no stick. And now Bester has a defenseman stick. Klima shoots, scores! The Red Wings have tied it. Oh, 
Well, the Leafs were playing against just the Red Wings. Now they're playing against the Red Wings and 19,000 fans. Bester was knocked into the net and is a little woozy. I afraid he's talking to him. See him right there? But I afraid he's standing around with no stick. Can't block either shot. And they're Todd me and Peter Klima slaps it by him. Watch Probert hit him here. Just before that, Probert hit Bester. Shook him a little bit. Bester lost the stick. Klima jumped on the puck and tied the game. Well, Bester was not flying by his old junior roommate, Bob Probert. They both played together in Brantford. Bester got up, but he looked a little stunned. And he couldn't recover fast enough, I don't think, to be as sharp as he'd like to be. And when you add that to the fact that Todd Gill lost the stick and had to play without one, we have a 4-4 game with 7.51 left in the second period. And the Leafs have their work cut out for them now. These fans have been sitting on their hands for an hour and a half, and now they are going to give the Red Wings a real boost of adrenaline. Two very quick goals. Oates, a power play goal at 11.29, and at 12.04, Klima from Probert and Shabbat. And the game is tied again. 7.40 left in the second period. Red Wings moving up to center. That's Ashton playing it in. Bester stepping out of the net. Shoots a pass over on the boards to Terrier. His long pass. Nowhere near Dau. And Howard fired it back in. And Bester stopped it. Now Salming. Starting to Gray. The Gray coming out slowly. The Leafs move it up to Terrier. He backhands it in by Snips. Down the ice. O'Connell takes it in around the net. In a check, in for checking, but O'Connell backs up when he sees Dao come in and steps one over to Boo. To center. Played in by Burr. Fester out of the net. Fester reaching for it, nearly got caught by Ashton, who just barely missed getting another one for the Red Wings. Curran takes over. Play call. A great poke check by Alan Vester saved the Leafs from going down by one goal. Ashton's in alone on him, but Vester poke checks it right here. Had he not done that, you can see he would have been down, and Ashton would have had a gaping net to fire the puck into. A heads-up play by Alan Vester. And around the playoff circuit tonight, St. Louis leading the series. They want to wind it up. Seems away on a big start Hartford just over Montreal in the third period and this is a tough series tied at two tied tonight at two in the first and the Oilers want to wrap that one up the Red Wings want to wrap this one up they were trading by two goals things were not looking too rosy but they've got two goals back in a hurry there's another shot long one for Bester Kern coming back he was hit hard in there by Barr Hill shoots it up to the right wing Marowak tried to break in from that side or couldn't that played to the blue line and out here comes Holt setting it up again but Gallant missed the pass another penalty coming up it's going to be against the Toronto Maple Leafs the Wings will have another man advantage. This is the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. Hey, Tyler, where you been? Uh, I'm a cardiologist. Again? Yeah, it's my pacemaker. Been reacting with my game console. No kidding. Yeah, the other day I was rescuing my 13th damsel from the dragon's lair. Freaking heart stopped. <sighs> So you going to the Halloween dance on Friday? No, I can't. I'm prepping for a colonoscopy. Ah. Uh. 
They don't want you seeing how well a 50 pounds lighter yet 37% stronger platform performs. They're nervous you'll discover how the new suspension makes bumps virtually disappear. And they sure don't want you to know how eight more inches of leg room adds comfort and makes you one with the machine. But most of all, there's one thing they really don't want you to see. Skidoo dealers invite you to discover the full 2008 Skidoo lineup at skidoo.com. Skidoo, there's nothing like it. We're going out for a smoke. You coming? Nope. I'll pass. Okay. What gives? I'm quitting. <laughs> quitting? Like you just had one this morning. I'm cutting back gradually with Nicorette. That's nuts. You should be out there with them enjoying a nice relaxing smoke. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, you can cut back to quit with Nicorette. Nicorette, help crush your craving. The best day around town is on my Yamaha. My best farmhand, it's always my Yamaha. I catch the big ones with my Yamaha. For days on the trail with my son, these are our Yamahas. What kind of Yamaha are you? John Foos. Getting a penalty for slashing, and his coach, John Brophy, not happy about it. Schnepps was in earlier. Offsetting penalty with Dao. But now Don Foose is in, and the Red Wings will have the man advantage. And a chance to take the lead in a hockey game. It's 4-4 now. Old check. Got the puck to the line, but not out. Another chance, this time he shoots it down the ice. Ed Ocek scored first in a hockey game under a similar situation where the Leafs were killing a penalty. Now the Red Wings are alive with two quick goals in the second period to tie the Leafs. Puck in, Ocek tried to move it out, did not. Oates dropped it back to the line to O'Connell, to Oates. Oates, long pass the other way, Norwood shot. Booted away by Bester, Norwood again. Once more, Norwood centered it right in, and Bester knocked it away. Rebound is there, and the Leafs can't clear it out. O'Connell faked one way, then the other. Then it comes back to O'Connell. He played it ahead to Barr again. Barr gets it back to the line to Norwood. He did not shoot it from there. On the other side, it's centered again. Bester down. He saved it, and Osborne couldn't clear it out. Norwood kept it in. This time, the Leafs will get the puck out and down the ice. Old check lifting the high one away. A lot of time gone in the penalty, though. Only 30 seconds left in the Don Foose penalty. Michael O'Connell's father was a quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, but Adam Oates is the quarterback for the Red Wing Power Play. There's playing it up there. Blaisdell slapped at it. Couldn't get it out. We're tied at four. The Red Wings with a man advantage. Move it around. Outside Bester. There's Klima. Lost control of it at the side of the net. O'Connell moving up. Takes a look one way, then the other. That's where he goes, back to the line. Howard played it up to Klima, and Bester gloved that one and held on to it as Probert was nailed in front of the net by Curran. They get their sticks up. Curran lost about in the series to Big Probert earlier in Toronto. I like Curran in his own zone. Speed, he's not built for speed, but boy, when he decides to take you out, he does it, and he chose Probert. And Probert didn't like the treatment he was getting. There's Bester being knocked around a little bit. Boy, there's a stop he made. He didn't catch it, but he made it with his gloved hand. And the Leafs defensemen have been in front of their own net tonight. I'm sure Alan Bester just goes along with that chain. We look at this one tied at four in Washington, threatening to get right back in it. Leading in the third by three goals. Boy, what a story New Jersey is creating this year. Are they ever? That's right on the island. Not easy to win in there at any time, let alone in the playoffs. 
Antlin suffered a groin injury and was replaced in this period. Just after the Leafs had scored at 5.30. And he's in the Detroit dressing room at this moment. Groin injury. We hope not seriously enough to keep that competitor out for very long. Glenn Hanlon, snap stop one at the, the Leafs get three players going. Secord, the pass on escape from Tyrion. He couldn't move on it. Secord now drops it back. That was dangerous with Shabbat in there. And attack to Tyrion. Tyrion up there with Secord. Knocked away. And the play call is going to be a league penalty. After that one, and the Red Wings will get the man advantage again. Molson Leafs Hockey on Leafs TV. The Maple Leafs head to Philadelphia for a matchup with the Flyers. See it live Thursday at 7. Leafs TV, official station, Leafs Nation. Want to win an iPhone before it hits the stores? Then let's play Memory. Have a close look at this iPhone menu because some icons are about to disappear. Can you tell me which icon is missing? Text sun or clock to 84040 for your chance to win an iPhone. Have another look. Time's up. Text sun or clock to 84040 now. TMG subscription service. $2 Canadian per message. Four messages per week. 16 plus only. To cancel, text stop to the ultimate in full high definition with LG when you don't just watch it but live it life's good we're going out for a smoke you coming no thanks I'll pass okay what games I'm quitting <laughs> quitting but you just had one this morning I'm cutting back right that's nuts you should be out there with them enjoying a nice relaxing smoke that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, you can cut back to quit with Nicorette. Nicorette, help crush your craving. Got their share of penalties earlier. Now it seems as if the Leafs are taking a few. Terry in this time. There's the hook right there, boy. I don't think Terry, I think Probert was falling. The Red Wings had three penalties in a row to kill off early in this period, and now the Leafs are in the middle of killing their third in a row. And Klima is on again with Probert. Now he tried to shoot it in and hit Shabbat that time. Shabbat, Probert, Klima. With O'Connell coming up on the play. Puck cleared in along the boards. Leafs old check can't find it. Shabbat does. Back of the net to Klima. Vester covering up. He kept it out, jamming his skate on the post. Turn was dropped in the crease area. Here's O'Connell. He has no room to shoot. Now more penalties called. In front of the net, Probert and Curran. Boy, they're going at it. Bob Probert's going to get a cross-checking penalty. He got in behind Curran and cross-checked him as he was attempting to get right in the way of Alan Vester. And in what has been a very calm game with neither team physically involved at all, play coming up right here. You'll see Probert go back in front. And he pushes. He takes a whack in the ankle. There's the penalty right there. Bob Probert's not an easy guy to get out of there. And Alan Vester's already been knocked into his own net once. So the power play the Red Wings were enjoying is over. And with 2.57 left in the second, the score 4-4. The 
teams will play four against four for the next minute and 14 seconds. And then the Leafs will have the man advantage for 46 seconds. Detroit starting out. Play to the left side. Coming in as Oates. He dropped it perfectly. And that shot by Norwood testing Bester. He was out cutting the angle. And the puck came right to him as planned as far as Bester is concerned. But Norwood rifled it. And now one minute left of the Terrian penalty. Well, a rather amusing story out of St. Louis. At the end of the first period, Sutter and Murdoch, Sutter the assistant coach and Murdoch the coach for the Hawks, went into the coach's room and they were so mad they slammed the door. They couldn't get it open. They couldn't get ready for the second period. They missed the first two minutes of the second period to have it drive a forklift through the door. So nothing is going right for the Chicago Blackhawks. Wow. That's shutting the door, I'd say. Off the boards for Bester. Leaves for even strength. DeLorme missed Dom Foose. He got a pass up there. That's Fergus taking a shot. That hit the post and came back out behind Stefan. Here's Dom Foose now to the other side. And back to Dom Foose winding up. Coming in. Shoots. High shot and missed. I am Brady going up the bucket. DeLorme. Or even strength at this moment. 22 seconds left in the Tyrion penalty. Puck cleared down the ice. Iafredi decides he'd better come back and touch it. And uh, icing is called against Detroit. Well, Stefan's only had three shots, and he's been in there for well over 10 minutes. I'm sure he's not in the mood. He knew he wasn't going to play, and he missed that one. It seemed to go off his stick and then off the post. Watch this. This puck's in if it wasn't for the goal post. Stefan looks handcuffed on it. And then, and then this one, Dom Foos drives over his head. Oh, it's deflected off the defenseman's stick. It's very difficult for a goalie to get psyched up the way you have to get psyched up to play the way you can when you're sitting there enjoying the game, and all of a sudden, in you have to go. He came in at 5.30 of this period when Hanlon suffered a groin injury. He is still a dressing room. 4-4 the score with a minute 50 left of the period. And Tyrion gets set to come out of the penalty box. Now he is out and on the ice. And the Leafs have 44 seconds with this man advantage. A chance for the Leafs to take a lead going into the third. Osborne moving up with Tyrion in front. And that pass went behind everybody and out. Down the ice. Leafs come back. Salming is there. Moved it ahead to DeGray. 24 seconds left in the Probert penalty. Salming will bring the puck out to center. Drops it back now to Olchek. Olchek shoots it in to the corner, and the wings are back first. Hallward slapped a high one that got by and out to center. Detroit penalty just about over. Osborne played it ahead for intercepted. Coming back in, but it's knocked away, and Probert is out of the penalty box. The wings are at full center. 4-4, and Colbert comes in. Colbert along the boards. Tough to push off the puck. Burr centered it. And Dom Foose got back. Coming to center, Blaisdell for Toronto. Three Red Wings standing along the line. Here's his shot. That hit snaps. Dom Foose didn't quite get a good one away. Malwa from his knees played it ahead, but Fergus was trapped offside, and the play is called. I wonder if Calgary will wind it up tonight. Hoken Lube has scored. Well, he's a hot commodity in the playoffs as well as during the season. What a great year he had. Jersey added another one to get up 3-1 against the Islanders. The Islanders, remember, tied the series with an overtime victory on Sunday night. I guess that series had, has had the most close games of them all here in round one. This one is close. Dying seconds of the second period. It's tied at four. Nil tried to steal it. The Leafs get it out. Barr lost his stick and dump. Foos coming up there across the line. Ten seconds to play in a period with that shot. Stopped by Stefan. Here's Gill though intercepting. Gill coming in. Fergus scores! One second left when Fergus ripped that patented high shot. And the crowd here at the Joe Louis Arena stunned a little bit. With only one second left on the clock, the Leafs take 
a 5-4 lead. Well, the leaps, unbelievable. I mean, they looked like they had the Red Wings down. Then they lost that. The Red Wings seemed to come on and in with one second to go. And I can tell you, it is a killer to give a goal up in the last second of a period. A very bad play by Jim Nill, who just tossed it into the middle. And Tom Fergus, with one of the best wrist shots in the National League, showed us it again and had no hope. This is a beautiful shot by Fergus. Gill brought it in. It looked like the clock was going to run out. You see Gill 23. But then Fergus takes it, ripped it high. I don't think Stephen saw it, Harry. He heard it. He didn't see it. The shots were 10 to 7 in a period for Detroit. Well, the Leafs lead by a goal to score at the end of the second period. Toronto 5, Detroit 4. It's been 30 years since he first set skates on the ice. Hi, hockey fans. Now he's back. 11 original episodes shown during the first intermission of Leafs games on Leafs TV. See Peter Pock for the first time in over 30 years. Catch him only on Leafs TV. I'm Peter Pock. Are you ready to change your life? Look younger and be stronger? I went from a size 38 to a size 30 and lost over 70 pounds. You too can get remarkable results with Bowflex Home Gyms. All it takes is one simple workout, 20 minutes, three times a week. When they say you can work out 20 minutes a day, three times a week, they mean exactly that. You've got to get this DVD. It'll change your life. Call now for a free DVD that shows how you can get great results with Bowflex Home Gyms. I gave all of my fat clothes to my fat friends. Only Bowflex Home Gyms have power rod technology, the secret to getting a strong, sculpted body fast. I am not embarrassed to take my shirt off. I look better. I feel better. My wife gives me that little wink every now and then. Own your very own Bowflex Home Gym for no money down and low monthly payments. Be strong. Be fit. Be Bowflex. Call or go online now for your free DVD that tells you all about Bowflex Home Gyms. Call now. LG. Don't just watch it. Live it. And now, with a chance to win your share of a $5,000 shopping spree, life's... I think modern technology and personal fantasy make a dangerous cocktail. While more thrills in life normally offers, Frank's Red Hot Caesar Spicer provides a full-flavor Caesar that will thrill you in ways private videos never can. A thrill a bite. Molson Leafs Hockey on Leafs TV. The Maple Leafs head to Philadelphia for a matchup with the Flyers. See it live Thursday at 7. Leafs TV, official station, Leafs Nation. Well, a big goal from Tom Fergus with just one second left in the second period. The Leafs have scored five goals on just 12 shots. Uh, Glenn Hanlon is auditioning for the Mormon Tabernacle Choir after uh, being injured there in the second period. Uh, Mr. Neal uh, had a way of making sure we found out about that. Uh, Greg Steffen is in goal. A very big goal from Tom Fergus at this point, obviously. Oh, 1959 of that period, you know, one second left, and uh, Tommy Fergus with his patented, uh, I mean, there's a guy that gets the puck. I mean, we talked about Wendell's shot, but Tom Fergus, I think, probably had one of the best wrist shots, uh, and uh, with one second remaining, that was a huge goal for us. Alan Bester uh, is at his acrobatic best. He's a young man that uh, uh, came up at the same time Ken Reggett did, and it, it really became quite a bit of a, uh, a battle between the two of them because they were of the same age, and uh, and maybe it was a little difficult for uh, one or both of them at the time, but Alan's playing very well here. Yeah, Alan is. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, we call him Ernie. Ernie <laughs> Ernie's his nickname because he's he's after Ernie, Ernie Douglas. Douglas. Ernie yes, Douglas from my from three sons. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> now we know and exactly so Ernie, how old both of us yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> so Ernie is uh, playing very well in the Nets, and uh, you know, Al was. Uh, Obviously a small goaltender, but very acrobatic, and uh, you know, oftentimes he held us in uh, in games when we probably shouldn't have been in. But uh, he was playing very well that night on a night where we really needed a, a good good set of goaltenders. Now, Mark, you bridge a couple of eras here in Maple Leaf history. Uh, you're going to later play on a line with Eddie Olchek and Gary Lehman and have great success. Uh, the line of uh, Zezelberg and Osborne is part of Maple Leaf lore, it seems now. Uh, but as you look back at uh, April 12th in this game and the tape that uh, we got to you, had you watched yourself in a whole game and actually sat down and watched Mark Osborne play? No, not until I looked at that uh, <laughs> tape. And I do have a lot of tapes uh, at home in the basement. And, uh, 
but haven't you know really thrown them uh, in the VCR and, and taken a look at them. But uh, to bring the neighbors uh, over to prove that you knew that I played back then, or yeah, you know? no, no, they they they've known about that already. I've got little <laughs> little girls that tell them all about it, <laughs> but. Uh, um, no, I, I think I was surprised. You know, you're very critical when you watch yourself play, and I don't, I don't really enjoy watching uh, myself play. I think uh, in seeing some of the things that I did on the ice during that particular playoff series, I would have, I would have, if I would have pulled myself off the <laughs> ice a long time ago. And, and, and some of the things that you look at and that you're critical now that when you're, you're no longer playing, and you think, man, I can't believe that I did that or I played like that. That guy's brutal. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Probably a lot of people are echoing those same sentiments. <laughs> no, not one of them here, let me tell you that. But it is interesting to watch yourself, isn't it? It, oh. it gives you a different perspective. Oh, it sure does. Yeah. It sure gives you a lot of perspective. Uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And uh, But obviously there's some things that you pick up and say, wow, I, I actually did do that, you know? So, <laughs> but, uh, but it is. It's not easy to watch yourself. Uh, you know, it's, it's much easier to, and, and appreciate uh, how some of the other players do play. Well, we're enjoying watching you play here in Game 5 a lot more than possibly we wanted to watch that team in Game 4. So we're enjoying this one because at the end of two periods of play, the Leafs own the lead thanks to a last-second goal from Tom Fergus to end the second period. And you're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Hey, Tyler, where you been all day? I'm a cardiologist. Again? Yeah, it's my pacemaker. It's been reacting with my game console. No kidding. Yeah, the other day I was rescuing my 13th damsel from the dragon's lair. Freaking heart stopped. <sighs> so you going to the Halloween dance on Friday? No, I can't. I'm prepping for a colonoscopy. Ah. Uh. They don't want you seeing how well a 50 pounds lighter yet 37% stronger platform performs. They're nervous you'll discover how the new suspension makes bumps virtually disappear. And they sure don't want you to know how eight more inches of leg room adds comfort and makes you one with the machine. But most of all, there's one thing they really don't want you to see. Skidoo dealers invite you to discover the full 2008 Skidoo lineup at skidoo.com. Skidoo, there's nothing like it. We're going out for a smoke. You coming? No, thanks. I'll pass. Okay. What gives? I'm quitting. <laughs> quitting? But you just had one this morning. I'm cutting back gradually with Nicorette. That's nuts. You should be out there with them enjoying a nice, relaxing smoke. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, you can cut back to quit with Nicorette. Three sons, yeah, exactly. there you go. <laughs> now we know and exactly so how old both of us yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> so Ernie is uh, playing very well in the Nets, and uh, you know, and Al was uh, obviously a small goaltender, but very acrobatic, and uh, you know, oftentimes he held us in uh, in games when we probably shouldn't have been in. But uh, he was playing very well that night on a night where we really needed a, a good good performance out of goaltenders. Now, Mark, you bridge a couple of eras here in Maple Leaf history. Uh, you're going to later play on a line with Eddie Olchek and Gary Lehman and have great success. Uh, the line of uh, Zezelberg and Osborne is part of Maple Leaf lore, it seems now. Uh, but as you look back at uh, April 12th and this game and the tape that uh, we got to you, had you watched yourself in a whole game and actually sat down and watched Mark Osborne play? No, not until I <laughs> looked at that uh, <laughs> tape. And I do have a lot of tapes uh, at home in the basement, and uh, but haven't you know really thrown them uh, in the VCR and, and taken a look at them. But uh, to bring the neighbors uh, over to prove the played uh, back then, or yeah, you know? no, no, they they they've known about that already. I've got little <laughs> little girls that tell them all about it. <laughs> but uh, um, no, I, I think I was surprised. You know, you're very critical when you watch yourself play, and I don't I don't really enjoy watching uh, myself play. I think uh, in seeing some of the things that I did on the ice during that particular playoff series, I would have, I would have, if I was broke, I would have pulled myself off the <laughs> ice a long time ago. And, and, and some of the things that you look at and that you're critical now that when you're you're no longer playing and you think, man, I can't believe that I did that or I played like that. That guy's brutal. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Probably a lot of people are echoing those same sentiments. No, not one of them here, let me tell you that. But it is interesting to watch yourself, isn't it? It, oh. it gives you a different perspective. Oh, it sure does. Yeah. It sure gives you a lot of perspective. Uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And uh, But obviously there's some things that you pick up and say, wow, I, I actually did do that, you know? So, <laughs> but uh, but it is. It's not easy to watch yourself. Uh, you know, it's... it's
easier to, and, and appreciate uh, how some of the other players we play. Well, we're enjoying watching you play here in game five a lot more than possibly we wanted to watch that team in game four. So we're enjoying this one because at the end of two periods of play, the Leafs own the lead thanks to a last second goal from Tom Fergus to end the second period. And you're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Hey, Tyler, where you been all day? I'm a cardiologist. Again? Yeah, it's my pacemaker. Been reacting with my game console. No kidding. Yeah, the other day I was rescuing my 13th damsel from the dragon's lair. Freaking heart stopped. So you going to the Halloween dance on Friday? No, I can't. I'm prepping for a colonoscopy. Ah. Eh. They don't want you seeing how well a 50 pounds lighter yet 37% stronger platform performs. They're will discover how the new suspension makes bumps virtually disappear. And they sure don't want you to know how eight more inches of leg room adds comfort and makes you one with the machine. But most of all, there's one thing they really don't want you to see. Skidoo dealers invite you to discover the full 2008 Skidoo lineup at skidoo.com. Skidoo, there's nothing like it. We're going out for a smoke. You coming? No, thanks. I'll pass. Okay. What gives? I'm quitting. <laughs> quitting? But you just had one this morning. I'm cutting back gradually with Nicorette. That's nuts. You should be out there with them enjoying a nice, relaxing smoke. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, you can cut back to quit with Nicorette. Nicorette, help crush your craving. Experience the ultimate in full high definition with LG when you don't just watch it, but live it. Life's good. Ally Afraidy gave the Leafs a lead with a power play goal and a two-man advantage. Ed Olchek escalated it to 4-2, but Adam Oates and then Peter Klima, after Bob Probert had bowled over Alan Bester, tied the game at fours. And Tom Fergus's goal, with one second left, has lifted the Leafs back into a lead. The Leafs 5, the Red Wings 4, April 12, 1988. Two periods in the books as the Leafs and Wings play Game 5 of the Norris Division semifinal. And this is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Want to win an iPhone before it hits the stores? Then let's play Memory. Close look at this iPhone menu because some icons are about to disappear. Can you tell me which icon is missing? Text your answer, son or clock, to 84040 for your chance to win an iPhone. Have another look. Time's up. Text son or clock to 84040 now. TMG subscription service, $2 Canadian per message, four messages per week, 16 plus only. To cancel, text stop to 84040. The best day around town is on my Yamaha. My best farmhand, it's always my Yamaha. I catch the big ones with my Yamaha. For days on the trail with my son, these are our Yamahas. Just watch it, live it, and now, with a chance to win your share of a $5,000 shopping spree, life's good. I think modern technology and personal fantasy make a dangerous cocktail. While more thrills than life normally offers, Frank's Red Hot Caesar Spicer provides a full flavor Caesar that will thrill you in ways private videos never can. A thrill a bite. Bob Cole and Harry Neal back again in the broadcast booth at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. The Maple Leafs with a goal, with a second left on the clock. Off the stick of Fergus and John Brophy and the Maple Leafs take a 5-4 lead in a period number three. I'm sure that in Brophy's wildest dreams, he didn't dream that he would, his team would be up a goal going into the third period of the must game at Joe Louis Arena. Let's see if the Leafs can muster enough courage to play a strong 20 minutes. They've scored on... 
up their 12 shots on goal, meaning the Red Wing goalies have made seven saves in two periods. Hanlon left at 5.30 of the second period. He faced seven shots and gave up three goals. The Red Wings now would love to get one early. Probert goes in looking for it now with Shabbat and Klima. Shabbat falling, got the puck back. Klima shot. He was right there. He seems to be there all the time. And the puck came right to a stick, and he quickly let her go. This time didn't get it up high enough, as I'm sure he would like to have a high shot at Bester, and Bester stopped it. John Brophy's got to get three defensive forwards out against this line as often as he can. And he's making a line change now. I mean, you can't just play and disregard the fact that this line has been a problem almost every shift for the Shabbat, great on the face-offs, and he's in there to take this one. But the Leafs win it this time. I afraid he shoots it immediately to the boards in the corner, and the Leafs tip it out to center ice. Red Wings pick it up again. Three of them are in there. Klima gets ready, dropped it back. Shabbat centered it, and Colbert tied up in front of the net by Todd Gill. Out for Fergus of the Maple Leafs. He scored in the last second of play of the second period to give the Leafs the lead. They now enjoy 5-4. Up for O'Connell. To center ice, O'Connell trying to lift one in. Didn't get it high enough, and DeGray comes right back out for Toronto. Klima checking him, took it away from him. Klima circled. Up it goes to Shabbat. He's bumped by Gill. And the play goes offside at the Toronto blue line. Todd Gill. One of the young, relatively inexperienced defensemen the Leafs have to rely on, perhaps too often, certainly not Gill's fault. Veteran defensemen are hard to find, and the Leafs too often have to play guys without much experience in critical situations. And boy, this is a tough league to be a young defenseman in. Old Check winning the draw this time. Salming to Old Check. He couldn't handle the pass. The Red Wings shoot it in. They'll pour in after it. Adam Oates, 21, is on the ice. With Gallant. And Barr. But the Leafs down the other way. Osborne's shot picked out by Stefan. Red Wings circle, picking it up. Pass ahead to Oates. Oates has been dangerous for Detroit. And the Barr. And Gallant was tied up. And a penalty is being called against the Toronto Maple Leafs. On that play. That penalty was called from 190 to 100 feet away. Boy, you got to be sure on that one. And I don't think Terry Fraser was close enough to be sure. And I know you can see. And here it is here. Watch to the right of your screen. Now that happens 25 times a hockey game. You have to wonder when a game's this critical why that would be called. But when you're 90 feet away, you don't see it as well as we do when we're about six feet away, thanks to our great replay crew in the truck. Gary Fraser penalizing Blaze down with the Maple Leafs here early in the third period, 126 the time of the penalty. And the Red Wings on a power play, backhand shot, the best stop the rebound, he stopped that, and another shot by Barr, and he's hugging the post. Cutting the angle, he kept three out. There's Oates again. Flipped it back to the net. It comes out into the slot. Back to the line to Norwood. Into Oates, off the boards, he mishandled it. It goes to the corner again. The Red Wings are on it first. But now Curran takes it away, slapped it up, and gets it down the ice. Hartford has defeated Montreal. Three to one. To prolong that series. Here's Norwood to center. Shooting it in for the Red Wings. And it comes all the way back down the ice. 115 left in the penalty. This is a very important power play for Detroit. It's early in the third. They're trailing by a goal, and they need one here to give them a lift. Iafredi is coming back. He slaps at it, puts it high, and it gets by everybody. Down the ice, O'Connell couldn't play it. And Stefan comes out of the net. Hooked it high away from Terrian, who was in there in a hurry. There's Terrian looking for it. He knocked it loose. The Red Wings finally pick it up. And O'Connell strides across the line to center and shoots it. He went behind Bester too quickly. He couldn't stop it. Terrian is there. The Leafs are going to get it out of the zone again.
Five seconds left in the penalty. Dao plays it in. 30 seconds left in the penalty to Blaisdell of the Maple Leaf. The Red Wings try it again. Four of them. Led by Hallward, the defenseman. He handles it pretty well. Hooked it up behind the net. Leafs trying to get it out of the zone again. Osborne couldn't find it. It comes to Klima. He's dangerous around the net. Klima got set to make a play, and here it is. Shabazz scores! <laughs> Klima saw Shabbat come in, and it's tied now. Another power play goal with seven seconds left. On the penalty, Shabbat gets his goal, and the Red Wings get the octopus on the ice. Ron Hertza, the owner of Pomeray Seafood Company here in Detroit, is the top octopi seller for fans coming to the Red Wing game. He said frozen. Then you get your date to put it in her purse, and then when you come to the game and at an opportune moment, you fire the octopus. He estimates there are 40 of them in Joe Louis Arena, despite the fact we've only seen two. A nice goal here by Klima. And Shabbat ties the game up. A nice pass from Klima up over right shoulder of Vester. 16-39. It'll be a furious finish here at Joe Louis Arena. Marwa, who has scored his first NHL goal on the ice, couldn't handle that pass. Pass along the blue line to Todd Gill. He had it poked away by Barr. Burr, rather. Burr in with a shot. Didn't get it through. It's centered. Now it's centered again. Ashton back of the net. Neil out front. Here's Neil. And Vester made a sensational save on Neil. The Red Wings are hopping, though. They've tied it on a power play goal here at 3-19. Shabbat from Klima and Robert. From Detroit, the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. Are you ready to change your life? Look younger and be stronger? I went from a size 38 to a size 30 and lost over 70 pounds. You too can get remarkable results with Bowflex Home Gyms. All it takes is one simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three times a week. When they say you can work out 20 minutes a day, three times a week, they mean exactly that. You've got to get this DVD. It'll change your life. Call now for a free DVD that shows how you can get great results with Bowflex Home Gyms. I gave all of my fat clothes to my fat friends. Only Bowflex Home Gyms have power rod technology, the secret to getting a strong, sculpted body fast. I am not embarrassed to take my I look better, I feel better, my wife gives me that little wink every now and then. Own your very own Bowflex Home Gym for no money down and low monthly payments. Be strong, be fit, be Bowflex. Call or go online now for your free DVD that tells you all about Bowflex Home Gyms. Call now. Hey, Tyler, where you been all day? I'm a cardiologist. Again? Yeah, it's my pacemaker. Been reacting with my game console. No kidding. Yeah, the other day I was rescuing my 13th damsel from the dragon's lair. Freaking heart stopped. <sighs> so you going to the Halloween dance on Friday? No, I can't. I'm prepping for a colonoscopy. Ah. Uh. And the puck down the ice and played in on the boards. In a check, digs it out. Now he falls in, a penalty coming up. A shot that just misses. Vester going to the bench, another shot. Here's a centering pass, and now the penalty called against the Detroit Red Wings. So penalties playing a very important role again in this playoff game tonight at the Joe Louis Arena. And uh, Jerry Gallant gets the call for hooking. I don't think there's any question about this one. It was in a scoring area. Inachuk was going to get get the net on Gallant, and who knows what he was going to do with it. Bester, who's going to have to keep the wings away, makes a big time stop on Jimmy Nill, number eight for the Red Wings. The other end, watch Inachuk. He's got away right there. You see, he's going behind the net, and Gallant hooks him off his feet. The Leafs have a chance to get their third power play goal of the night. They win the faceoff but can't keep the puck inside the line. Blaisdell is forced 
by Shabbat. What a game he is having again tonight for Detroit. John Shabbat, 16. He's out there killing a penalty. Look at him. He's there all the time. Wherever the puck is, there he is again. John Shabbat is one of the great penalty killing guys at cutting off the angle of your easy pass. Forces you to change your mind and make another one. And a lot of players don't do so well when you have to change your mind. Shabbat gets a hand as he goes off. He'll be on again before this penalty is over. Unless the Leafs score, they shoot the puck in. I afraid he's standing at the blue line. Let's her go. The rebound! And Stefan makes a big save. Osborne was there in front of the net. And now, Norwood was knocked to the ice. And the whistle stopped the play. Now, whether Fraser is handing out another penalty or not, we don't know. He hasn't made any indication of saying there might be a couple of penalties handed out. He's coming this way to the penalty bench. So are two players. Double penalty. It's Norwood and Osborne going into the corner. Coming up right now after that big save by Stefan. You can see that Osborne gave Norwood a little cuff in the back of the helmet. And Norwood did quite a nice job of acting, although he was hit. 19,000. 873, and if you count those 40 octopi, there's 20,000 in here, Bob. They're getting very close to 20,000 tonight. They're averaging 19.5, something like that. Great crowds in the Bill Lewis Arena. It's a great hockey city, this one. Detroit always has been. Now they have a pretty good team to cheer on. Shabbat on the ice again. They get the puck out of the zone. A minute left. And the Detroit penalty. And the Leafs unable to get going. Now they try it. Coming up is Don Foose. Two red wings are on him. And it's offside. It did get outside the line. And they put it back in quickly offside. The Leafs have a tough time getting, gaining the red wing blue line under control with the puck. They have to make their mind up. If they're going to shoot it in, they have to shoot it in at the red line. They can't wait this long. Puck. About 25 guys overskated that puck, and I don't think it went out, Bob. I think that play was onside. But what I was saying before, if they're going to shoot it in because the Red Wings are lined up four across, you have to shoot it in at the red line. Now your forwards don't have to worry about trying to slow up to stay on front the Red Wing that gets the puck much quicker than they're doing. The Gray stops when it's center. Drives it into the Detroit zone as far as the line. That's when Snep blocked it. 35 seconds left in the Detroit penalty. 5-5 the score. Salming now shoots it in. Here comes the Gray. But the play is called again. We've got two more penalties. That kind of stops it for a moment. And it's Blaisdell and Snips who are going to go now. Well, this is the year of the penalties in the playoffs in the National League. And although this doesn't penalize either team as far as manpower is concerned, every night one of the three stars could easily be the referee. What do you do about this situation? It's obvious they're going to call every they can see, and I don't, I don't say they should not, but as a coach in a playoff a series like this, Harry, what does one do? What does one say to the players? Well, you got to tell the players you can't take penalties on a retaliatory basis or in a non-scoring position. And the uh, fact is that the penalties are always there. It's whether the, what the referee decides to call. This year, the, they're drawing the line much quicker than they used to. Any coach would tell you they'd love to have a few penalties let the players decide the win. I am Brady's shot is blocked in front of Stefan, and the Red Wings shoot it down the ice. Only 20 seconds left in the penalty now. Bester gave it away as he tried to clear that one ahead. 15 seconds left in the Detroit penalty. The Leafs with a man advantage. Can't seem to get across the Red Wing blue line. Now they shoot it in, but can they pick it up? No. Shabbat.
away and down the ice again. That will kill the penalty. Gallant is ready to step on the ice. He's on now. And there he is. After the puck, but Inachak comes in. Inachak shoots. Rebound. Picked out by Stefan. And the rebound, they couldn't play. Comes over this way. Inachak racing after it. He was bumped by Hallward. Tyrion gets in. Low shot, missed the goal. Red Wings get it out to Jerry Gallant at center ice. Gallant going in on Curran, backhands it over in front of the net. Knocked down by Barr. Barr to Gallant. He stepped in front and the league's intercepted. That's Don Foose with the puck coming out on the interception. Don Foose, quick shot. Rebound. And it's knocked away by Gallant, who got back to cover his man. Out for Adam Oates. Oates to center. He'll get the crowd going as he carries in, but Curran took it away from him that time. Three leaves back, and it's Don Foose in, but Yaren Chuck's offside, and that stops that play. They don't want you seeing how well a 50 pounds lighter yet 37% stronger platform performs. They're nervous you'll discover how the new suspension makes bumps virtually disappear. And they sure don't want you to know how eight more inches of leg room adds comfort and makes you one with the machine. But most of all, there's one thing they really don't want you to see. Skidoo dealers invite you to discover the full 2008 Skidoo lineup at skidoo.com. Skidoo, there's nothing like it. We're going out for a smoke. You coming? No, thanks. I'll pass. Okay. What gives? I'm quitting. <laughs> Quit? But you just had one this morning. I'm cutting back gradually with Nicorette. That's nuts. You should be out there with them enjoying a nice, relaxing smoke. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, you can cut back to quit with Nicorette. Nicorette, help crush your craving. I think modern technology and personal fantasy make a dangerous cocktail. While more thrills in life normally offers, Frank's Red Hot Caesar Spicer provides a full flavor Caesar that will thrill you in ways private videos never can. A thrill a bite. John Shabbat, who's getting to play a lot more because of the injury to Steve Eiserman, is responding with a, a terrific game. He's tied the game on the power play here uh, for the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, Bob Probert. 398 minutes and penalties. I don't think there was a hook or a trip in any of those totals. Uh, this is a guy who is, at, at this point in his career, is a tremendous force because not only does he scare a lot of people to death, uh, he's a talented guy and can score. No, no, no question about that. Uh, probably in the in the footsteps of a Dave, Dave Semenko who had an opportunity to play with a great player in Gretzky and you know Probert's in Detroit playing with either Oates or, or Iserman and uh, you know I think that year scores 29 goals in the regular season and 398 penalty minutes uh, um, you know six foot four and, and can go to the net and has some offensive abilities and gets a lot of space out there no kidding and, uh, <laughs> did Osborne uh, give him a little space oh well <laughs> you know Joe I mean he was uh, he was a left winger I was a left winger and so uh, I didn't have the luxury of having to play against him thank goodness <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know we we stayed on our wing and uh, and stayed away from him as much <laughs> as possible he was uh, uh, an individual this this whole Detroit team uh, under Jacques Demers uh, has really turned a corner, haven't they? They've, uh, they were uh, struggling for a great many years, but now uh, Iserman has developed into the leader and the offensive uh, catalyst, and this, this team is on the verge of some great things. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, you know, I was a part of the Red Wings in the early 80s where, uh, you know, Mike Illich took over the team, and, and uh, you knew when Jimmy Devolano came in there from his Islander days, he was scouting with them, and and uh, that something was going to happen eventually in Detroit. It was just going to be a bit of time. And uh, with uh, Jacques Demers and during uh, those years, things were starting to come together for the Red Wings, and they were definitely on their way up. So the Maple Leafs are now into a tie in the third period. We are deadlocked at fives. Let's go back to Bob Cole. Bob Cole with Harry Neal, Ron McLean, and Don Cherry at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. You see it all there, 5-5, nearing the eight-minute mark of the third period. Toronto Maple Leafs, Borja Salming plays it up. 
And the Red Wings will bring it out. That's Hallward dumping it on the boards for Klima. To Zombo and up for Shabbat, but he couldn't handle the pass. Shabbat bumping, solving lightly. Hearn is back there to help. And Dao brings it out for Toronto Maple Leafs. Klima is chasing him. Dao shoots it in. Stepping out of the net to stop it. Osborne comes up with the puck. He is bumped. Carries on, trying to knock it away with his skate. Probert is on top of Osborne. Osborne gets away from Probert. Now a weak pass, and the Red Wings get it out. Klima bumped by Osborne at center. Here's Probert stealing it. Dropped it back to Shabbat. Shabbat bumped by Secord, and the Leafs get it out again. Dao pushed it into the Detroit zone, and the Leafs make changes. Eight and a half minutes gone in the third period. Trophy made a change. He had Dao, Secord, and Osborne again. Shabbat, pretty good threesome from the Leaf viewpoint. Let's now go to Chris Cuthbert for a report on the Edmonton Winnipeg series. Here at the Northlands Coliseum, the Oilers have a 2-0 lead after one period of play. Two power play goals. Mark Messier with the two-man advantage. And then this goal by Essa Tikkanen, also on the power play as he takes the feed from Gretzky and Messier to beat Danielle Bertion. A controversial goal for the Jets, which was disallowed late in the first period. Here's Laurie Boschman moving in. Now watch in the corner. Kevin Lowe is hit by Ray Neufeld and is injured. Ron Hogarth is about to blow play dead when the puck goes in behind Grant Fuhr. The goal not allowed. The Jets are not happy as they trail 2-0 after one. Gretzky assisting twice for Edmonton. The Maple Leafs and the Red Wings are tied. Coming up, he takes a shot, and that's blocked by Stefan as he came out. The Leafs have it in there. Another long shot that missed the goal. And Joey Koster, not on the ice much tonight, comes up with it and gets it out. Puts it all the way down. Bridgman went in, but not quickly enough. And icing is called against the Detroit Red Wings. Leafs TV has seven games you won't want to miss. Toronto faces league MVP Sidney Crosby. Stanley Cup champion Anaheim Docks. Showtime in Los Angeles. Payback in Boston. Consistency of the Devils. A flashy Alex Ovechkin. Last stop, the eye of the storm. Carolina Hurricanes. Seven games you won't want to miss in January on Leafs TV. the ultimate in full high definition with third period during the halfway mark and Jim Nill shoots the puck down the ice again for the boy but icing is waved off on this one falling back falling coming out right wing pass and moving the puck is the other defenseman Dale DeGray comes up with a weak shot kicked away by Stefan and the Red Wings are back DeLorme back of the goal that's DeLorme, Ed Manning it to Ashton. That's intercepted again. Good play as Old Check comes in. He's bumped by Norwood, who fell on the puck. And then the Red Wings shoot it out to center right. Solving turns around with it. Now at the mark of the third. Flipped down the ice by Osborne. Leafs make changes. Red Wings come out again. Norwood, quite a long shot, missing the leaf net. But the Red Wings are in to pick it up. Burr. Into the corner. He has Barr with him. And the Leafs take it. From this side. Get it ahead to Inichak. Inichak with Tyrion going to the slot. Inichak dropped it beautifully. Coming in Dao, but he tried to go around Adam Oates. That's not easy. And Oates is going the other way with it. Oates got across the line, but they were offside. And the play is called. Well, the Boston Bruins taken a slight stranglehold on the Buffalo Sabres, although Thursday night they're back in Buffalo, where Buffalo won both games, so that series is long from over. One mistake, and the Sabres are gone. Montreal, I'm sure, not too happy about heading back into Hartford. 
win the series. You know, once it gets into the seventh game, you can play it the highway. No might mean nothing. It's 5-5 here, and the Red Wings could wrap up this series with a win tonight. The Leafs humiliated 8-0 on Sunday night at Maple Leaf Garden. And here tonight, they're tied at 5 with 9.20 remaining in the third period. Toronto Maple Leafs coming out. That is a shot in by Fergus. Fergus scored with a second left in the second period. I afraid he kicks it in with a skate. Dom Foos is bumped off the puck. Zombo takes over for Detroit. Gets it across the line to center right. Tipped there to Gallant. He plays it in. Fergus comes back. Gallant is in there for checking. Todd Gill, a pass ahead on the left wing board. Dom Foos to center to Marwa. In there, Marwa gets set, dropped it back. I have Brady missed a chance to move in. Marwa centered it again. Another penalty is being called. A high sticking penalty against Howard of Detroit. And boy, these penalties are coming in this hockey game. The Stanley Cup playoffs return in a moment. Here at 11.22 of the third period, the Red Wings draw another penalty. Hallward goes for high sticking, and DeGray gets the puck along the blue line again. DeGray shoots it. It's in front of the net. Red Wings clear it out, though, covering up in front of Stefan. Toronto's two for six in the power play, but they've never needed a power play goal any worse than right now. Red Wings have been great killing penalties in the series. The Leafs going a little bit better tonight for the man advantage. Not on this rush, though. Blaisdell has to come back. As Nils stopped it. Blaisdell to center ice, striding in for Toronto. Blaisdell at the blue line, dropped it over to Olchek. He shoots it in wide of the goal. Salming moves on it at the other point. Now to DeGray, and his shot, a low one, stopped easily. And the Red Wings get it by DeGray, and down the ice again with a minute 10 left in the penalty to Holland. He's off serving two minutes for high sticking. The score is tied at five. And the Maple Leafs get a chance on a power play. And Don Foos, a long shot. Steps is there first. Fergus couldn't pick it up. Steps again. And he gets it out of the zone. Tell you, the Red Wings have been tough while shorthanded. It looks easy to shoot the puck in on the power play. That's a flat shoot in. Your chances of getting it is no better than the opponent's chance. Here's Fergus coming up with Dom Foos. And a cross wire. Shabbat sees Barr, and he just missed him with the long pass. Barr has lots of time to go in. Around the net. Throw it through the crease. Red Wing, shorthanded, but still put on a little heat. Now Todd Gill. He played it behind Dom Foos. Back to Gill. Up over the line he goes. Pass into the skates of Marwa. And snaps again, shoots it down the ice. Well, the Red Wings took advantage of the fact that they know what they're doing, killing penalties, and the Leafs have not had a good chance on this power play. 6.38 to go, the teams are even. Passing by the Leafs on that power play was nothing short of atrocious. Couldn't get the puck onto the sticks. And the Red Wings just kept picking them off. Now current. Played it to the line. Nil nearly intercepted. Now it's centered. Here's Ashton. Oh, the save by Ashton. And a great chance for Detroit on that play. Gloria Salming racing the center. He steps over the line. Salming centered it. Nobody could get in there. And attack was trying to. Now he's tied up. And Burr turns back for the Red Wings. Gets it out. Salming wrapped it back in again. 5.55 left in the third period. In a tied hockey game, a goal for either of these teams now might be it for the night. If it's for Detroit, it'll be it for the season for Toronto. 5.35 remaining as Old Check comes up there. Drops it back in a check. On a long time on the ship. Couldn't make a play. Klima and Shabbat. Here's Shabbat from his knees. Klima was knocked down in the fence. But there was no penalty call. Zombo is coming in now. Zombo for Detroit. Fires one up. 
into the net. And the Maple Leafs get it out of the zone. Was I afraid he falling at center ice? Howard steps back up across the line, looks behind, dropped it. Shabbat centered it. And the Red Wings go after the goal now. Big Probert. It's center. Klima. And Bessler made another sensational save with Probert going through the crease as Bessler held on to it. That was a big save. The shot scores! Goal alert. Want to always be in the game? Text GO TOR to 52525 to get all your Maple Leaf game goal alerts. Don't miss another goal again. Get your Maple Leaf game goal alerts. The best day around town is on my Yamaha. My best farmhand, it's always my Yamaha. The big ones with my Yamaha. For days on the trail with my son, these are our Yamahas. What kind of Yamaha are you? LG. Don't just watch it, live it. And now, with a chance to win your share of a $5,000 shopping spree, life's good. I think modern technology and personal fantasy make a dangerous cocktail. While more thrills in life normally offers, Frank's Red Hot Caesar Spicer provides a full flavor Caesar that will thrill you in ways private videos never can. A thrill a bite. It's been 30 years since he first set skates on the ice. Hi, hockey fans. Now he's back. 11 original episodes shown during the first intermission of Leafs games on Leafs TV. See Peter Pock for the first time in over 30 years. Catch him only on Leafs TV. I'm Peter Pock. Peter Klima had. Fake the shot, wait till the defense went down, took the shot, Bester saved it. That was a big save by Bester. With only 4.45 to play in the third period, the Red Wings want to end the series. They can if they can get one here. Centered by Oates, but Don Poos turning the wrong way, had to backhand it out to center ice. Snips into the tunnel. Ahead to Oates, shoots! Bester tested again by Adam Oates. Turn, got it across the line to center. A lead pass into Dom Foos. Dom Foos trying to hang on to it in the corner, and Fergus comes in to help out. Dom Foos kicked it loose. O'Connell has him trapped on the boards, though. Gallant from back out to Oates. Oates shoots it in to the left of Bester, and Todd Gill has it. Back to the net. Gill moved it very slowly. Tipped off the boards by Marwa to center. Long shot for Bester to handle. He's been busy. And here's Gill. Left wing pass to center, and here's Tyrion's shot. And cuts the goaltender for a second. Two. Breakout for Detroit. Nil with the back. And it's broken up, but offside was called anyway at the blue line. That stops the play. <laughs> And they're sweating it out behind the bench now, especially John Brophy, his team, could be eliminated tonight. And you know Jacques Demers doesn't want any more hockey in this series. He wants to end it this evening. They're tied at 5, 339 remaining in the third. So whoever gets a goal now, it'll be mighty, mighty big. Hallward to center ice. Red Wings going to try right here as they flip it in. Bester is out of the net. Salming turns the other way against the flow and gets it ahead. In a check through the middle to Dow, and he just lifts one in. Stepping out of the net to give it a nil. Nil, try to throw it out. Gets another chance at it. Does get it to the line and out to Ashton. Ashton shoots it at an open wing. Hallward, the defenseman, had a hunch to move up. Decided he had better not, and he got back. Curran and Salming and Curran in front of his own net. Brings it to the line and out to Dau from center. He dumped the high one in. The Leafs and Red Wings both make changes. 45 remaining in regulation time. 5-5 is the score. The Red Wings leading the series 3-1. Could end it all tonight. The Leafs could send it back to Toronto. 
for a sixth game on Thursday if they can get one here. Probert circles at center. He lost control of it. Passed it across the line. Here's a shot by Olchek. A hard one that misses. Blaisdell kept it in. That's Olchek back of the goal. Blaisdell missed it. Coming up is Ia Frady. And the Red Wings send three out to center and Klima is one of them. Got it up to Probert. Klima dropped it back. Here's Klima going in. Probert missed it. Here's another shot. Bestwick kicked that away. Probert after it again. He's working hard to win it here. Probert falls. Gets to the line. And the Leafs pick it up. Todd Gill does not get it out of the zone. It's slapped hard, but not out yet. Shabbat now centers it all the way back to the line on this side. Kept in by Norwood. Klima again back to Norwood. Detroit with the pressure on. Oh! Probert tried it. Bester saw it. Now it's Ia Frady over there. Hooked it away with his hand. It's a glove pass. So they have to call it for the face-off in the lead zone. A minute and a half left. All right, Harry, as they get ready for this face-off, Bester adjusting his equipment. Let's look around at some of the other games tonight in the playoffs. Rick Vibe gets two to get Chicago back in the game, but Brett Hull makes it 4-3. We know that one's over. Back to Hartford for game six. Back to Buffalo for game six. Calgary's ahead, could eliminate LA tonight with a victory. Edmonton probably will eliminate Winnipeg tonight, and here we go with a minute and a half. And Detroit trying to eliminate the Maple Leafs tonight. They have a great opportunity right here. It was a glove pass. Another final Washington over Philadelphia. And that thing is prolonged a bit. I wonder will this series be extended? They're looking at a Thursday game, number six in Toronto. The Leafs can get a goal, but the Red Wings can end it all right here. They win the faceoff. It rolls back of the net. Salming going after it. 125 left in regulation time. And the Leafs step smartly to center, led by the veteran Salming in on Snaps. Snaps stopped him. O'Connell dropped it, but Inachak was there. Inachak digging it out, tried to center it. It hit the back of the net. Fergus knocked down, sweeps it in front of the goal. The Red Wings are going to clear it. They get it up to center ice and go after it. 105 to play in regulation time. The Red Wings want to get a goal here and end the series. The Leafs try to extend it. The Red Wings are up for checking on the puck, but solving is there. We're into the final minute of regulation time. It was 8-0 Sunday night at Maple Leaf Garden for Detroit. Can you believe how they can turn it around like this, these two teams? It's 5-5 with 40 seconds left in the third period. Fester out of the net, mishandled it. Buck is cleared back to the line. The Red Wings on a move. Got it in back with the net. Oh, and a chance there. Fanning on it was nil. Here's another chance for him. He tried to tip it toward the Leaf net and couldn't. Leafs. Fergus gets it out of the zone with 24 seconds remaining in regulation time. Hallward paid it ahead. Gallant going in. Offside is called at the Maple Leaf blue line. And this place is jumping the Joe Louis Arena. 17 seconds away from overtime in this game. 8 to nothing on Sunday night for the Detroit Red Wings. You would think, Harry, it was all over for John Brophy, Gary LaRiviere and his crew, but they're into this one 5-5, but only barely in it now. Well, they have to give the Leafs credit. A lot of people would have thought they'd have rolled over and died early. They haven't. Jimmy Nil fanned on a pass out that would have ended this game. And the Leafs had a little stroke of good fortune with about 30 seconds left. I think we're headed for OT. We'll see. 17 seconds remaining. Red Wings with the draws. They usually do. Get it in. Bester this time. Stop it. Back of the net. 10 seconds to play. Hanging on to it. Back of the net. By Afraidy. Now Gill played it out across the line. Yep. We're going to overtime tonight here in game five at the Joe Louis Arena. They scored five goals apiece. Fergus tied it up at 19.59 of the second. And now we look forward to sudden death overtime. Our Stanley Cup playoff coverage continues in a moment. By the Red Wings, they'll move on in the Stanley Cup hunt. Goal by the Maple Leafs, and we go to Maple Leaf Gardens for Thursday. Why don't you call it sudden victory, Bob? Okay. It'll be a victory.
Chapman and Death for the other. That's center. The Red Wings go after it early. They shoot it in. Bester out of the net. He has been outstanding tonight for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Here's Neil stealing it. Neil comes out front, jams at it. Rebound is there, and Osborne brings it out. He has Blaisdell with Old Chuck catching up on the play. Osborne in across the line has to go to the corner with it. Stepping out of the net, trying to stop it and can't find it. Norwood slapped at it. Gets it along the boards to Neil, but Salming kept it in. Old Chuck is in front, shoots, scores! Old Chuck, turn and fire, and the Maple Leafs have won in sudden death overtime here at 34 seconds of sudden death overtime. The Maple Leafs, having lost eight to nothing Sunday night, are back to extend the series for number six at Maple Leaf Gardens Thursday night in Toronto. And we'll be on the air with that one for you. What a turnaround by the Toronto Leafs tonight at the Joe Louis Arena. Unbelievable. Salming lobs it into the middle of the rink. Ed Old Chuck, a spinorama slap shot low to the far side on the stick side for Stefan. Jimmy Neal can't get the puck out. Salming just dumps it into an open space. Old Chuck turns around, doesn't even look. And you can see the shot right here. Just beat Stefan. And it's Maple Leaf Gardens Thursday night for game six. And Jock Demers may not do a critique on the Leaf style of play after tonight's game. Here is the pass to Olchek. He turned, figured I have a chance. And yes, he did have a chance. Stefan did not. Salming set it up. Olchek ends the game at 34 seconds of sudden death overtime. 6-5. Toronto wins it. Stanley Cup playoff coverage continues in a moment. I don't care where you are, when you're in the Stanley Cup playoffs, I mean, it's overtime. That's an exciting time. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, and it happened really quickly, too. Uh, you know, 34 seconds into that uh, overtime period, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to be on the ice and, and carry I missed an assist that was obviously yours. I can't yeah, believe yeah, they didn't get you one. Man. Yeah, we have to go <laughs> to the NHL and have that reviewed because I did touch that going back to Boria, and Boria kept it in and fed Eddie, but, uh, you know, it was uh, a great shot, and it was Eddie's uh, third goal of the game, and, uh, you know, that was, a, that was a pretty neat feeling to uh, obviously make amends for the 8 nothing dropping a couple of nights earlier and uh, Eddie uh, scoring his hat trick in overtime. Uh, it, was, uh, it was great. Now you go back to Toronto, you lose subsequently game six, 5-3, uh, an empty net goal. Obviously, it's a, a much better performance in front of the, the home faithful, and I'm sure that they were much more appreciative of it, too. Well, I think they were, and, and uh, I believe that Usher had a new, uh, <laughs> new jacket and hat. a new job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got his job back and everything like that. But, but uh, no, I mean, we, we did end up losing in, in game six and, and uh, did have a better performance, but uh, I think... Things were tarnished by by that point, even though we did win Game Five. Uh, you know what happened uh, in Game Four, that eight nothing. Uh, that was a long summer to remember uh, what that felt like. I bet, and uh, an opportunity to come back later on and uh, have some great runs with the Leafs in the '90s. And uh, we want to thank you for coming back and uh, revisiting. Um, well, a happy moment in this game, but a, a sour one to kind of get it going. We want to thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure, Joe. It's great to see you and uh, be a part of yeah. it. Yeah. Mark Osborne, our very special guest, because we took him back to April 12th, 1988, as the Maple Leafs win in overtime in Game 5 of their Norris Division semifinal. And this has been Molson Canadian Leaf Classics on Leafs TV.